This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is sponsored by Carbonite Online Backup. Carbonite backs up your computer files for you to the cloud automatically and continually. Start your free trial today at Carbonite.com. No credit card required. Use the offer code ROOSTERTEETH and get two free bonus months with purchase. This podcast is brought to you by Audible.com, the internet's leading provider of audiobooks. The Neil Gaiman Presents production of Dimension of Miracles is coming to Audible on March 26th. And to kick off its publication, Audible is sending one lucky winner to New York Comic Con. Enter for a chance to win a trip for two to New York City, including round-trip airfare, four-night stay at a hotel, and two four-day passes to New York Comic Con in October 2013. Visit audible.com slash sweeps and enter your email for a chance to win. Entry period ends April 12th. And be sure to visit Audible podcast.com for a free audiobook of your choice. Nobody knows. Hey! hey! What's going on? Well, Gavin That's Brandon. had his cock out. No! Yeah. <laughs> it's true, he did, like right after, like before we started. So the people have spoken. I've replaced Gus on the podcast. The person who right? Who spoken. said that? My mom. Uh. Makes sense. Did your mom actually watch the podcast? Oh, yeah. She watches everything. My dad understands nothing about what I do. Nothing. Literally I, I nothing. My mom's, like, <laughs> on the site. She understands it. Is he... What, are your parents American? Uh, my dad's an immigrant. Okay. His dad is Persian. Yeah. And his mother is... She's like normal. Cajun. She's like Whatever. South. Yeah. Normal? Yeah. I'm not regular. No one wants to say regular. white. Yeah. She's, well, she's, they're like a whole different... Not a species. Pus is what? Pus is Iran. Species? Yeah. Go ahead, Brandon. So you know, have you been? A, I don't want to say anything bad about my southern Louisiana family. So you're Iranian. <laughs> but they're like specific. It's like you go there they're and it's specific. it's like nothing like you've ever <laughs> seen before. Saying. They're genetically specific. <laughs> they're not a different species per se. Yeah, not technically. Well, you go there and you're just kind of like, oh, these people are just like a different species. Have you been? I have been to southern they're Louisiana. They're wonderful. It's just different. I used to go to, you grew up in Houston, right? Yeah, I grew up there. Yeah. So I just asked. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking answering you. No, we're not starting this you're thing. Re- you're we're not starting this <laughs> podcast. Always restate the question <laughs> and the answer. Uh, that's a good interview would do. You, did you ever go to New Orleans when you were in high school? Did you ever just like road trip to New Orleans? Um, no. I think in junior high, I went with my dad to a Saints game. So that probably doesn't count. Although we were still solicited to go to titty bars by random dudes. What does that mean? <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> you walk down Bourbon Street, <laughs> and a guy uh, just like gives you a card, and he's like, "Hey, come to a titty bar," and it's like, "I'm 12 with my dad." Yeah, I love no the, discrimination. I nah. love the stuff in sketchy places that people offer you. Like when we're in Amsterdam, there'll be a guy just going, "Crack, crack, crack." <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> cocaine. Nah, cocaine. I'm good. <laughs> nah, Gavin. <laughs> nah, no, no, thanks. Do you consider it? Do you think about it, or do you to make him feel like a good sales guy, or? No, no, okay. no. I'm like, I have another crack guy. We like, yeah, I've had him for like three years. There's a bit of a relationship, you know. Yeah, I don't want like, to hurt his, his prices are pretty low. I'm, if he know. finds out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm going to stick up to? He'll, he'll uh, match it. He sends me a Christmas card every year. It's, I don't know if it's the American equivalent of that, but I am absolutely positively dead sick of everywhere I fucking go to shop, everywhere they want me to sign up for their card at that place now. Like, there, it is not even like a credit card. It's just like the card Loyalty. that says you yeah. shop there. And yeah. I, did, I don't want to do that. He always goes on about, oh, you should get this Jersey Mike yep. thing. Every totally seven agree. sandwiches, you get a free sandwich. Yeah. And then you have to no. faff about, you have to remember a card. I have to faff up. about, it takes eight seconds. I go there all the time anyway. Why would I not just get free? If food? it was on record, like I could say, oh, my name's Gavin Free, whack it on that, I would do it. But like, why don't they have, have card, that, like, in your data, like on your license, you can just scan it. And then they have your thing. Well, yeah, but you use, my, scan it. use my credit card. They're if just I, scanning my card. It's the same thing. They're just going boop. Like yeah, they don't even have to do a card. That's a thing. Yeah. I mean, if you only went to Jersey Mike's every day, like Jack, when he does that thing at the <laughs> bar down the street with the 50 beers, that's like the greatest thing he's ever done in his life. That the thing? thing. Yeah. Twice. They, like, yeah. Twice. They stamp it off the key. Twice. Well, it's like, like scaling Mount Everest. Chris twice. Had, Chris had nobody his, gave uh, a shit about Mount Everest. <laughs> Chris had his Chick Fil A calendars. That was like, you know, a free biscuit every six months, and you threw those away. And it what like, was this? Chris had, do you remember the Chick-fil-A calendars? And there was a coupon for every month, and you threw them away? They, they had Why a did fucking, you throw it away? They had a fucking <laughs> stack of Chick-fil-A you? calendars. <laughs> it was like but 30 calendars. away? Because it's a stack of 30 <laughs> calendars, Brain. I did 30 coupons. I'll agree with you there. This is a card. I'll take it. It's one place I go to. I'm not saying I sign up for every single place, but I go to Jersey Mike's like two times a week. Fuck it. Oh I'll get a God. card. One of the biggest mistakes we ever made when we moved into this office oh my God. 
was we bought stainless steel desktops and we moved you and all your guys, we moved them up into the, the loft. And you guys were all in the center for the production area and you well, had all, four stainless steel tables together. And after like the first 15 days, it looked like they had just like, like licked their hands <laughs> and it's <laughs> all over. It was just disgusting. And so I was up there it's fucking cleaning. Territory. And I threw away the goddamn calendar. Stainless steel is a lie, right? Who? That is like the greatest lie ever told. Yeah. I guess they, the mini doesn't permanently stain, but it looks like shit all the time. Yeah. All the time. Regardless of who's sitting there, right? Isn't that what you're saying? It looks like shit <laughs> no. for everybody. Dude, that's, that's what you're saying. That it does nothing to the people sitting difference there. between your table and everyone else's table. It's the table. exact opposite. Drow. <laughs> yeah, right. It. Who had a worse table than you? Yours was just like, blech. Monty. He has glue over his table. Well, yeah, that's a little different. Monty's a little different. I mean, <laughs> of course it's different. Of course. <laughs> Monty gets passed. Robots don't count. Bro. My, my, <laughs> my desk by far is the most ruined desk in the whole, Absolutely. The whole building. I though. love your desk. Yeah, it's got no corner. There's a hole in the front of it. Everyone's, People have signed it. Everyone's written like, There's some dude's phone number who happened to stop by one. Yeah, it's true. You call him? He no. didn't. I did that to Michael's desk the first day. He got, he got a brand new desk. And the first thing I did was take, pull the keyboard and sign it as big as I could. You sure did. I autographed oh. it. And then this prick slammed some wet bread on it the other day. Yeah. And now there's like, look, I'll find a it new. It haunts him. Get me a little splash of wet bread. Where did that end up? Did that end up as an RT Life or an age behind the scenes? It was, it was in life. last week's RT Life. That, that, Michael, kudos, because you're framing on that when you smack that bread down. The, the lead up's great. Right. But when you smack the bread down, you keep him in frame the entire time. It was time. a split second decision. I'm walking in and I was like, <laughs> I, saw, I saw the opportunity because there's just shit all over his desk. Because Gavin's desk, one, it's Gavin. He's like the messiest person ever. Hey! No. It's a, nah, he doesn't like throw anything away. He's just like, oh, I don't need this. And just like throws it at his screen and lands on his desk somewhere. Plus, there you go. Plus, he has the, uh, he has the desk closest to the door. <laughs> Video of, Brent, of Gavin running out there after I slammed it down. Yeah, but the parking lot. He has the desk closest to the door, so it gets the most wear and tear. But as I walk in, there was like one tiny little spot for space. Check out this slammed it down. Skilled right ragdoll move. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Uh, it's good. Uh, Boop. Boop. <laughs> Someone made a GIF of that in that RT Life of Gavin falling at the end, uh -huh. but with no context, just cut it, and like everyone's like, oh my god, what happened to Gavin? They thought he fainted. So I've been wondering why my damn phone wasn't charging anymore, and yeah. then reviewing that. Footage. He slammed the wet bread right on my light. Has nothing to do with it. And now my phone has nothing to do. You put wet bread on my cable. It didn't work well before that. Well before that, Jeff has tried using it. And he's like, "Your cable sucks. My phone's not charging." So it's just a cable that doesn't work. Yeah, and he's like, "You hit it with wet bread." I'm like, "How? How is the bread destroyed the, the cable?" Oh, that's on the yeast. box. Do What's not that? hit with wet bread. Yeah, I guess. It's, on the, it's, it's on like, the... hang on, wipe off. Okay, it's fine. It's like, no, you ruined it. You ru the wet bread ruined it. It's a bit done. So. Doesn't the lightning thing work both ways? Can't you just turn it around if like one of the pins? Is yeah, it done? works one of the ways. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it works fifty percent of the time. Just get a new fucking table. <laughs> it's know. nine bucks. It's twenty. It's twenty bucks. No, 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 no. Because you, you're getting you're getting one from Apple. Don't get it from Apple. Get it from Amazon. A third party Apple uh, product. It's not. It's just a lightning cable. It's just a. Uh, it's it's it's, its own thing. Oh, don't, don't Apple worry about make it. that cable though. What? No. Don't. Also, Apple the make lightning. It? If you get it from Amazon, it's black. It's not white. That's it's, good because my phone is black. Everyone's looks phone's black. Sleek. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know Who why. would get a white phone? I had a white phone. Brandon before. has a white phone. Why did you do that? <laughs> yeah. Why the hell would you do I had a black that? phone for like ten years. I did the same yeah. thing on the last one. Yeah. Yeah. I, was just like, I wanted to change. I needed. I needed something. Something new in my How life. How long have you been named Brandon? It sticks. Just stick with the black. So, Bernie Burns. Does that make sense? Speedo, yeah. we, we did not introduce yeah. ourselves. Brandon introduces yeah, himself as a good host. That's Brandon. That's Brandon over there in Gus's seat. That's Bernie on that one. Hey, how you doing, everybody? I'm Bernie Burns. That one's Michael. See that? Hello. That's Michael. That one's Gavin. You're gonna put on my Gavin. hat. My hat. I should Gavin. say we were supposed to uh, have the uncorking of the beer. What's, What's the yeah. right term? I but Gus sure. isn't here, and it just it smells like feet. And I don't, I don't know if you it. guys are smelling it's because it's behind me. Yeah, no, I'm in a comfortable level over here. What? It's on the other side of the set. But uh, you, you said you? you smelled it, right? Yeah, it's, it's like good. someone's like, dirty feet. It? Is it supposed to be like that? Listen, I'm I'm just mad as ever about it because Gus kicked my goddamn cat out of the studio because the cat apparently smelled. And then what does he do the first goddamn week the cat's gone? He makes f stinky ass malty beer and brews <laughs> it right there and he leaves it to ferment in the corner like a fucking bitch. <laughs> Bernie has been riled up like yeah, well, before this podcast. Well, we just on. got back from Pax East. You are just like a firecracker. Did you have a good time? Why do you I had a great time. Oh, because my hair's getting too long. Look at this.
I'll tell you what, like, like, I totally respect that. As we have very similar hair, yeah, uh, I, mean, I almost put the hat on today, and I was like, eh, yours is I all guess flat and smushed because I've top. been because I've been wearing the hat all day. Uh. All right, uh, just real quick, uh, question from Twitter, RT Podcast. Uh, Smoshy Tabuscus wants to know: Is Gus dead? Yes. So, oh, so yeah. this weekend okay. we went to Pax East, and we were I'm there so sorry, in Gus. Boston, Massachusetts. God, who all went? I went. Gus was there no. before he died. Jack. Barbara, Kerry, Miles, Monty, Monty and Shane. And Shane. So there's somebody else. Sean Ye. No. Didn't no. go. And then also, Michael, Lindsay, and Ray also went, but they just went on their own, like on vacation. Uh huh. And just like hung out. Yep. What'd you think? You have a good time? Yeah, I had a great time. Not having to work is great. That's pretty cool. Although you did, I mean, I mean, you, when you get spotted around the yeah, convention center. That's different from, like, you have to be here at this time. You have to be there. Not being on a schedule is, like, the most relaxing thing ever. The, like, the fact that I can roll into the convention center at, like, noon. It's just like, eh, whatever. That's a, that is that's good. I just got a really cool email just now. Oh, yeah? So, uh, one of the things that we announced at PAX East is that, as, uh, you know, as you know, April 1st, or if you listen to our podcast on a regular basis, you probably know this. April 1st is the anniversary of our company, and this year is our 10th anniversary as a company. And so we're going to be doing lots of different stuff uh, to celebrate our 10th anniversary. One of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding into the Rooster Teeth store, we're going to be adding in this Bernie bobblehead, which you may have seen behind me for the last couple of weeks. We've been kind of sneaking there on the podcast. Give it a little whack on the head. A little whack. A so this is the <laughs> Bernie.com saga story that I told as part of the Rooster Teeth Animated Adventures. Uh, he's got a little platypus in his hand right here and a can of Fosters. And if you can read the description, it says Carpe Platypi. Is that out of focus or am I losing my vision? All right. Well, thanks, Kyle. Is the right, bobblehead out of I got focus? It. No, it's fine. I can read the letters now. So anyway, so these go on sale April 1st in the store. As you can see, it's a wonderful likeness of me. It looks just like me. Um, uh, it's a nice bronze-looking statue. It's not actually bronze, though. So. Uh, and that'll be up along with what else? What do we, we got a, a shirt going up this week? We this, Gavin's uh, this Tower might be of one Pimps. of one of my favorite shirts that we make. That one is going to be very popular. Sweet, fantastic Tower of Pimps. shirt. And you can't see from this angle, but it's actually a load of quotes that we've said in Let's Plays. See that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All your favorites and per personal some favorite here. If you just look right here, suck my knob. See that? <laughs> 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 and uh, as, as as very serendipitous timing with all of this. Uh, there was a group of Rooster Teeth fans, or people from the community, who were at SideQuest at RTX last year, last summer, and one of the items that was auctioned off during the SideQuest Child's Play charity auction was a Bernie statue. Uh, local artist Kayla Cromer, also the same artist who made our Rooster Teeth couch, uh, she made a Bernie statue based on that story, and the guy who won it has taken it all the way down to Bernie, Tasmania, and taken it to the park in Bernie, and he's taking pictures, and he just literally sent me the URL oh, dude. where he oh. posted them. Oh, oh. To get up in here. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna I'll put them on Twitter real quick, but then we'll also pull them up Email here. it to Chris. Email it to Chris? Chris, I'm going to post it on Twitter, and then you can pull it off there, okay? <laughs> I, I, really, I have no idea how else to do that. I don't know if I can email from this laptop. I don't think I've oh. set that up on here. <laughs> do, the, do the grunt work. Just go on Gmail and do it. No, oh, yeah, that's a good call. Come on. So did you announce the two new things we have coming out April 1st, the oh ones that we were working on in here? Uh, go ahead. Uh, well, I don't want to spoil it if I'm not supposed to. Well, what is it, Brandon? Now, well, that's what I'm me. trying to like... I, I, I mentioned that, this. The thing that's coming out... Like, uh, 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 Everything we shot in here Everyone and put made. your fingers in your ears. They're just going to... So we... <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, go ahead. Please mention that. Please this mention is the like a oh, dance yes. of the hands. So... Oh. Um, on April 1st, we're releasing two new DVDs, um, a best of RT Shorts, which is probably the worst kept secret, and actually best of animated adventures that I don't think anybody knows about. So We actually showed at the PAX panel, we showed the 3D animated, Rooster Teeth animated adventure. How is it? Did you have 3D glasses for everyone? No, <laughs> no. It was all 3D like, oh, like in, yeah. That kind of 3D. It was like Pixar watch out. Oh, it was such okay. high fidelity visuals. Such as we've never been seen before. What, did, what else to. did you show at the panel? <laughs> what else did we show? We showed the Ruby Black trailer. Uh, we showed... <laughs> we started off the festivities this guy. with showing one of our new RT shorts that we've recently shot, which will be coming out soon. That's actually on the DVD. That's There's on the DVD. There's three unreleased shorts on the DVD. And there is a Gavin short in particular that is memorable, to say the least. Yeah. 
Gavin, you said you're never going to watch it, right? I will never watch he, that show. Here's short. the thing. I, I agree. never, ever watch that I was short. like, I'm never going to watch it either. That's fine. I'll we just avoid it. Don't I don't want to spoil it too much. Okay, no, that's fine. I walk into the, uh, into the panel literally while it's playing, and I went, God damn it. Well, well now um, I've watched it. What was the audience reaction to that, Bernie? Uh, it was awesome. We were backstage when it was playing, and it was just like, so, but we're facing the audience, and we just hear, you know, what is it, that panel room, is like four to, four to five thousand people in that room, and it's just like, constant, like, oh, it's basically like everybody's equivalent of wet bread, basically, <laughs> that, that, that breaks Did down. we get any video of it? Of the I, I wasn't there. Oh. Well, you, no, whatever. Has arrived, I'm tweeting shite. this now, in Bernie Tasmania. Those people can suck it. No. And there's oh, 20 shit. minutes of other new content that we shot here. Yeah, you guys and busted ass on those DVDs, man. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff. And the animated adventures, it's your favorite 40 animated adventures. It's the best of, but they're, they're like a minute apiece. <laughs> uh, and then commentary, video commentary in between of the whole cast. Uh, every, every person who's been in an animated adventure. So, plug. Gavin's there. Gavin isn't. You're, my, you're there, Michael. Little, uh, I'm there. There's a clip. Oh, look, there it is. That was a clip. And now a it's clip over. The now it's back. DVD. It's still See going. That? There's me. There's, there's oh, Matt. It's more clip. <laughs> there's Jordan. Let's describe it. Jordan is looking. You know how Jordan always looks really smart? Mm -hmm. He's looking smarter than ever these days. Oh, yeah? The 3D animated. You what do you mean so? he looks smart? He looks smart fashion-wise? Yeah, he looks. To impress? Yeah, he looks very sharp. What if he wore glasses? Would he look even smarter? No. No? I don't think so. Oh, all right. Smart and smart. It's two different kinds of smart. What if he wore a lab coat? Like, <laughs> what kind of smart is he? You the, brought it up. The dumb kind. Oh, you guys right. just reminded me of well, something I want to get for a second. Oh, God, the feet. Is it getting to you? No. Oh. It is pretty gammy, isn't it? You guys are crazy. Come over bit. here. Just how do you know, that's the question. Though. How, like, how do you know when that's done? Like, now that you know how beer is made, doesn't that make you like beer less? This, this is not how beer is <laughs> made. It, it, no, no, no. This cannot be how beer is made. But I don't There's understand. There's no way. I don't understand any long process stuff. Like, how do people find out that if you do this and then leave it for a month or Why whatever? Not? Like, like pickling? Right. Fuck around. Right? Yeah, or like, who left, who left a, was it a cucumber? And a, somebody probably left who, it on the floor. And they were like, oh, I found this a month later. Who's fine. There's vinegar wine. on the floor for a month? Pickling makes sense, though, because they need to keep shit around without refrigeration. So that's like... But then how do you know that? Because you just want to store shit. You try to figure out what to store But how do you know stuff. that vinegar... Do you just try a bunch of different stuff? I you guess you do. You figure shit out, dude. It's like put the circle in the circle and the thing falls in. What? There you go. Like the baby toy. It's all right? circles. All but the way put down. Put the triangle in the triangle. You can't put the circle in the triangle. Yeah. You put a circle in a circle. So and that's what the cucumber. vinegar was. You figured it out. I'm with you. I'm on the same page. So did you get beffed up? <laughs> okay. I did. I'm, I did. I'm so annoyed because I didn't go to PAX and apparently I missed out on Drunk Bernie. You did. And I've only seen Drunk Bernie twice. I tried to explain to Ashley to you, I will you not see me this drunk again in a very long time. What was the second time you saw me drunk? I know the one time. That was at Gus's housewarming party when Gus, <laughs> Gus finally came out of his shell. He had people over to his house. We all got, so, the whole party got so freaking hammered. I showed up with a bottle of Tequila. 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 Slammed it on the table and said, I'm getting drunk. And I immediately started feeding Gavin drinks. And then everyone started drinking. I remember, I, well, I don't want to call anybody out. Uh, people got very drunk. The whole party got drunk. And Gus never invited anyone over. <laughs> yeah. That's basically the way that worked. Now, now every time you hang out with Gus, it's always one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. It's like Gus and Esther and That's then true. The, extra, the extra seat. Didn't you get yeah. drunk at PAX Prime a few years ago? And you were at a bar and you handed out your phone? to a bunch of people and let them tweet from the Rooster Teeth account? That is true. So when <laughs> people have parties at the at PAX. Oops, I lost my mic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hang on. Sorry, He's got it. So it's just, no, it's going to be really awkward. What's, no up one's that, saying anything. what's up with that denim shirt that he's wearing? I think it's awesome. good. All right. Dude, did you see the tie? Yeah, that's good. All right, so the party, we always make fun of the parties that people have packs with this like fucking loud music and do 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 and all that stuff. But <laughs> the parties that we like to have at packs are like we just basically, or any kind of convention, is we basically just rent out a bar and then we have an open tab and that's it. Yeah. That's the way to do it. That's right? all you need to do. And the last one, actually, the one we had the videos for that we did at South by Southwest, that was just a bar and we were on, it was like a rooftop bar. It was perfect. There was that was, was DJ. Great. Was there a DJ? Do we have a DJ? Yeah, there nah. was a DJ. Yeah, there was. Yeah, no, was, was, yes, like, there was. Yeah. There was a DJ there. 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 There
I don't know. There's a DJ playing the music. It, it, well, a DJ, when I think of a DJ, is like a dude. The guy yeah, wasn't like, yo, 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 <laughs> wugga, 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 wugga. Yeah, no, there was a DJ there playing like the music. Like, this song's playing, he fades it down and sings a couple of lines. And then no, no, fuck no, that. No, he was not like a wedding DJ. It <laughs> was a DJ. That party was actually really great. It was, like, cool, too, because uh, like, like temperature-wise, because it was on the fourth floor, but, like, the, the terrace was there. One like, side the was super area. windy. If you went on the one side, it was really windy. But yeah. people, I feel like... So you had to, like, shield yourself with most people at the party. <laughs> We've talked about this before, though. I think people look good in the wind. You think people look good in the wind? I see. I think I look like shit in the wind because my hair sucks and it goes everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you look good in the wind. It's when the wind's done. I know how you feel. It's like, then it's like, katoosh. Yeah. Your hair's like that. So My hair is like, is like Kyle from South Park. Like, yep. when he takes the hat off, and it's like... <sighs> like, if I let my hair run wild, that's what it would do. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough life. It's a problem. I feel for you. I, I do. know. I feel for you. People don't understand. But two things, like, this reminds the DJ thing. Being at PAX East all week and reminded me, there's two things you should never, ever fucking do in a group of people. You should never use the phrase, make some noise. I fucking <laughs> hate that phrase. And if you have to say, make some noise, you've already lost the whole crowd yeah. at that point. Make some noise. Hey, who's excited about the new release of the DLC? <laughs> make some noise. <laughs> it's just like, no, it's always, make some noise. <laughs> and it's like, here, buddy, you go, hey. Oh, I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, shit. If you say that, yeah, right? <laughs> it's like, it's, it never works in the first That's try. That's like, saying, I'm dying up here. <laughs> hey. You know what, man? Give me a fucking lifeline. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have carnivals here, right? Like traveling sure, fairs yeah, and stuff, yeah. where there's like some ride like oblivion and then rotor and all those like genesis and all those rides yeah, like sure. that yeah yeah but every one of those has a dude on a mic being like step right up blah, blah. but all they do is smash their face against the mic so all you hear is <laughs> do, 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 do. and it's like kind of what are you saying dude i'm gonna go on the ride anyway but that's the kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> no they, we have those we have the same thing i think they call them hawkers is what they call hawkers. them yeah i think it's the term for those people and he's like a hawker, like they just like the people that shout out or whatever. Yeah, when you said the word again, I don't know how you spell it. Hawker, like a hawk. Someone, oh. someone H-A-W-K, who hawks. H a w k. Someone who hawks. I thought you said h o c k. I gotta look this up to make sure I don't sound like an idiot. <laughs> what? Well, God forbid. Granted. So yeah, God posted forbid. those photos, Chris. If you want to pull the photos up there, uh, I'm not gonna uh, email uh, them to you. Statue in uh, Bernie. No, I'm not gonna email them to you. <laughs> Hey, listen, guys, I'm, tr- I'm covering for the fact that I don't know Chris's email address. <laughs> 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 I'm just vamping. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Uh, can we do Chris, the next? The other thing I say, the other thing you can't ever do, ever. If you do the, if you do this, you're a terrible person. You're part of the problem. If you're in front of a crowd of people and you have shit like a like a t-shirt or a disc, and you take it, you hold it up, and you throw it into the crowd. Fuck you. Fuck <laughs> that guy. And, or, and they just start chucking shit into a crowd like they have a box full of stuff, and they yeah. just start chunking in a crowd. You're just you're. You're causing a fucking riot. Sometimes I they're heard... cannons to shoot stuff. Oh, t-shirt cannons. <laughs> that's the way to do it. Somehow that's a little different. Oh. I agree. If you got technology. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also, usually a t-shirt cannon's like in like a, I don't, don't want to say like a sports thing, but usually there's like a, like like, a yeah. bar. Who is no, no, it's not in a bar. It's usually there's like some sort of uh, like stands or crowds and it's like boom, right. firing. It's like kicking it a foul ball. It goes to a dude. Exactly. Yeah. Like if uh, it's not the same thing. Like if a guy hits a home run and the ball goes into the crowd, I don't go to the batter and go, Dickhead. <laughs> I don't think that. It's the same thing, you know? It's kind of implied that that's going to happen. But a guy who starts chucking shit into a crowd, Dude, you're, you're dead. At PAX, I can't I don't know what booth it was, but I was walking by, and as I'm just, like, walking around. And as I'm walking by, I hear, like, gather around, gather around, get in a circle, five minutes, so somebody's getting a t-shirt, somebody's getting a t-shirt. Someone was throwing a t-shirt into a crowd and advertising the build-up to it. That yeah. They were just going to throw a shirt. It does. It, that's like then it turns into like the segment before the credits for Walking Dead, like whatever that horrible. <laughs> it is. It's like people rah, 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 all the yeah. time. Like, Kids somebody's will gonna fucking murder die. each other. I was at a gaming convention probably eight years ago. It was actually when I first saw another Rooster Teeth fan. I saw someone wearing a Tucker shirt. I was like, oh, it's famous in England. And then uh, they were giving away stuff, and I got hit in the side of the head with an iPod. And, Fuck that. The, and, the, and the iPods back then were in big, like, big Did square boxes. No. You <laughs> suck. It slammed me in the side of the head and then everyone dived over me to get out. I was like, I'm getting out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want an iPod that badly. Right, exactly. It's yeah. not worth it, too. It's like the same thing we said about the parties uh, at these conventions. People fucking line up outside these clubs. In Boston, I'm not kidding, dude. It was 30 degrees. Yeah, it was cold. 30 degrees. There's girls out waiting uh, half a block away from the opening of the club, from the door. They're out there. Skirts that are like, just kind of like big belts, you know? Right. They got nothing there. <laughs> Crazy. And I'm like, how the, I can't, fu- I got like three coats on, I'm dying. I lived on the East Coast my yeah. entire life in New Jersey, 
And especially like the last five years before I moved here, I worked for an electrician. So I worked outside a lot. Like winter working outside. Like I used to work in the with, snow. With little like dexterity shit when you're yeah. doing electricity. Yeah, because yeah, like you that. can't wear like winter gloves. You just have to wear like nylon gloves, which like give you nothing. But like I remember that and it was like, yeah, it sucks. But I wear all these coats and bundle up. I've lived here like a year and a half, almost two years now. I've lost it. Like I went back to Boston and I was like, I'm so cold. <laughs> I'm so cold. I was just like a bitch. You know who else is like that? Barbara. Barbara, She's yeah. She's always in a blanket. Well, to be fair, Barbara, according to her, was always freezing to death in Canada. She was never used to it. Yeah, I don't know, man. She used to, like, I mean, she lived in the tundra. There's, there is a picture of her from, I mean, forever ago. She had to be, like, 17 or something in the picture where she was walking home from somewhere, and she took a picture of herself, and her hair is starting to freeze as she's walking oh, home. Oh, God. Oh, I had that Boy. once, yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I just washed that. my hair. I used to have long hair, and I would ride my bike to school, and I, I rode through a load of fog. And no icicles in my head. Something you told me the other day made me laugh. You said that, like, it's, it's with your, like, gagging thing. Like, Gavin has this, like, weird, like, gag reflex where even when he's burping, like, he burps weird, like, ah! and it's, like, really, like, acidy and weird. And he constantly, like, retches for nothing, like, just on his own. And, I, told, and, I told Michael yeah. that I almost throw up every single morning. And I have to... But why? Do a, because I have this thing where as soon as I change temperature, it makes me want to throw up. Like, it doesn't happen as much here anymore because it's hot. But every time I used to leave my house in England, I'd go from warm to, <laughs> to cold. And I'd be there on my doorstep going, <laughs> it, Like, it would make me almost throw up. And I have to do a weird cough and hide it, like, hide the gag. But I'm pretty sure every time my neighbors saw me come out of my house, I would go. <laughs> he said, like, he'd walk out of his house, but like, <laughs> like, walk down the street, and then it'd be cold. And then the thing about it is, and I was reminded of this, like, in New York during winter, it was awful. Because when it's really cold outside, you go in a diner or a place like that, like, they have the heat crank. Yeah, and I it's hate the that. worst. Because you go from freezing to, like, sweating to death. Then you go back outside, and you're freaking wet. So then you're cold, and you're, like, dying. So he said, like, he'd be freezing, walk in the diner, walk out. Yeah. Just, like, every and time he left the building. Getting out of the shower, same deal. Almost throw up every time. I don't know what every, every day. I don't life. know if it's pressure or temperature or moisture. I have no idea what it is, you, but it just it makes me gag. Do you not understand that it's not normal? Like no, in I'm, your brain, I'm, are you really like, maybe I normal. should go to the doctor? I'm well aware. There's a lot of things that have happened to me where I think I should go to the doctor all the time. But the thing is about going to the doctor, I'm scared about finding out all the things that are wrong with me, so I'd rather not know. <laughs> you know what? You You're know just what? gonna drop dead one day. Yeah, you that, at least that won't suffer that way. Yeah, late. you won't know. Well, I mean, that's I'm not like, true. You could I suffer, suffer horribly. But at least I won't be worried about it. <laughs> and you, you're all a bunch of young fucks, so I can't really, I don't, you, none of you are going to relate to this, but I got to tell this anyway, because it relates to what you just said. Yeah. I saw I went to the doctor recently, and I, 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 I have a history of, <laughs> I did, I got the prostate, I got, the, I did, I got, the, it's one finger, by the way. <laughs> not that I could tell. I had to ask. <laughs> <Not bad at laughs> That's a good so, point, actually. It's like, everything would feel like a giant <laughs> dildo, wouldn't it? I mean, it's you would assume that it was two? It felt like one, where you're just like, oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> it felt like a baseball Did you ask bat. beforehand? Did you ask beforehand or What's during? That? Did, did I ask for four? I, what? I said, no, did you, you, back I said did you ask? <laughs> did you ask beforehand or during? How I many asked, fingers he was using? I forget, Mike. I'm sorry. Was it like, I'm ah, not, how many's up there? I'm not, <laughs> or like, or you were like, I just want to get this out of the way. How many is it? Like, it's a formality. Or like, oh, God, is this normal? Yeah, no, I, I asked him. I said, we talked about the podcast that I do. I, just, I, t I called it a radio show because I didn't want to explain what the fuck a podcast was to a yeah. general physician. <laughs> but uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, so I kept asking the doctor. Uh, I said, I think, I'm, I, think I'm a, I have history of colon cancer in my family. I should get a colonoscopy. And that's like... If you bring it up, if the patient brings it up, then it's like, oh, it's a difficult subject, so, yeah, look, here's, what, here's what, we'll do this, or whatever. They, the guy wouldn't do it. I had to ask, like, two or three times that I wanted to schedule a colonoscopy. And he kept saying, nah, you're too young. Nah, you're too young. Just don't worry about it. Just wait a little bit longer. And I was like, I, it's like, I feel like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, what, oh, no. what, uh, <laughs> what van was he working at? <laughs> just like, nah, don't worry about it. Michael, I'm pushing you aside like a piece of paper. <laughs> nah, I'll you're probably fine. be right. You're fine. And then well, it was the real one because I kept like working it into the conversation <laughs> again. Sure. Listen, so, bro, I'm about, married. Okay? About that colonoscopy. So does it get to the point where you keep hinting together and by the end of it you're like, shove something up my ass, yeah. do it! Pretty <laughs> much. I figured I was either gonna have to get him drunk or wait till he was on his period to suggest it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> But it was better that you had to work for it. I didn't get it. Right? He didn't give me the goddamn appointment. I didn't get it. <laughs> so now I gotta get. A I tried to get a doctor to shove his fingers up. Or a you camera, could probably do it yourself. <laughs> you what? could probably do it yourself. Whatever. 
I mean, technology's getting there. Just launch a GoPro up your ass. <laughs> you probably could get yeah. a GoPro. I mean, take oh, the yeah, yeah, get a, like a, GoPro like a bro. rotor rooter. <laughs> no, no, like this is what the, you do. This is what you do. the toilet? You, oh, uh, like a rotor rooter? You know, like uh, a... Uh, I'm sure you have a plumber friend from New Jersey yeah. to help me out. You could I probably do. take out the lens part of a GoPro, wedge it up at Johnny, and then just broom handle it up there. I with mean, a, with a light on it. Hey, somebody had to try the vinegar, right? Why not be the guy that tries this? Today's podcast is brought to you by GoPro. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Brain had the sponsorship in his head. No, but no, well, uh, we're gonna stop it. Let's let's read the. I need to read this. All right, show. go ahead and read it, baby. Did you uh, memorize it? What? I didn't no, memorize this one. Like rehearsed. Right. Uh, the Neil Gaiman. Uh, the Neil Gaiman presents production of Dimension and Miracles is coming to Audible on March 26, and to kick off its publication, Audible is sending one lucky winner to New York Comic Con. Enter for a chance to win a trip for two to New York City, including round-trip airfare, four nights stay at a hotel, and two four-day passes to New York Comic Con in October 2013. Visit audible.com slash sweeps and enter your email in for a chance to win. Entry period ends April 12th. And be sure to visit audiblepodcast.com for a free Audible book of your choice. Mess that up. Are you going to mess it up? Yeah, I got it now. Figure it out. So, uh... That was perfect. You want the, one of the very first books I ever suggested on when we had Audible when they first came on as a sponsor was World War Z. It's still one of the best audiobook productions I've ever heard in my life. And I think it's really relevant to talk about World War Z again. I know we've talked about it before. People always message me about watching uh, or what, about listening or reading World War Z because we talked about it on the podcast. But the second trailer came out for World War Z. The movie. I, I think it's the second trailer. There was a teaser, then a trailer, then who can keep it all straight? There's a new trailer out this week. For World War Z. Anybody watch it at all? I have not. Any of you read the book at all? I have not. Okay, I'll probably have to save this for next week, but I remember I keep going back and <laughs> forth on this. Like, the first you. one didn't look like it was had anything to do with the movie at all, and then I thought, well, the second one, I could see some justifications for it based on the book and the audio book, um, but now the new trailer for the movie, I'm just like, uh, I don't oh, really? know. I, I, thought like, you, I thought you were going to say It's much longer, it. and I don't recognize anything. Eh, I kind of recognize some things in it. But like you're going to go wall. into the movie, though, with, like, an open mind. You're not going to go into it, like, pissed off, looking for things to get mad at. Well, I don't know, man. I don't know if I really like the book. And if you're a fan of something and they make an adaptation of it, I don't know that you can go in with an open mind. Well, what, what's the best adaptation? I'm disappointed with every single one. You, I, I didn't read Harry Potter, but everybody's so crazy about those Harry Potter movies. Well, they, they were faithful pretty, they're to the pretty books. good, I yeah. would say. I mean, even still, there's still stuff missing that you can nitpick. But I would say, in the grand scheme of things, they, they were pretty accurate. I think as long as they don't add stuff that wasn't in the book, if they omit stuff, it's fine for timing. But They'll change some stuff that they think maybe is more dramatic or not. But yeah, you I can't think, make a six-hour movie. I think like the fifth one, I'd say, Order of the Phoenix, is the most different, the movie from the book, because that book was like 890 pages. And it's like, you can only make the movie so long. What was yeah. the one where Dumbledore got bipped? That was the sixth one. Spoiler. Um, <laughs> spoiler. Half-Blood Prince. By the way, is that the new, like... That, that means spoiler, that yeah. statement? It that, used to be that Bruce overtook Willis Bruce Willis, Willis was dead. Yeah. Right. What was yeah. before Bruce yeah, Willis the ghost? What was the spoiler thing? Oh, I'm your father. <laughs> I guess. That's a big gap, though. That's a huge gap. But what else would it be? Maybe, yeah, I don't know. Maybe Sp Spock dying? But was that... No. What? Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> Spock died. Gavin, I'm sorry. So, um... Oh, What's man. the best death scene in a movie? What's the most moving death scene? Oh, I got that. I know oh. that. I know that one. Ugh. What is it? <laughs> uh, it's a bunch of a bunch of them in Saving Private Ryan, but the one where the guy gets stabbed in Saving Private Ryan. Look at look at Brandon's face. It's like it's horrible. horrible. Oh, where it's, where it's like it's like a slow it's a stabbing. Slow yeah. thing. And like, the guy's just saying no, no, please. Shh, wait, wait, stop, stop, stop. Let's talk about it. You know, and it's just like that's bad. That's news. that's the most bullshit thing about movies is how people go out with style. I'm sure every one of us, if we were faced with murder, would go out like a bitch. We'd all be like, yeah. please, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gobbed just doing that reenactment right there. I gobbed? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it was good. And I, I'm pretty sure, like, most people, like, go by, like, drowning in their own blood in their lungs, yeah. basically. Like, what? Why? Well, just like how they, depends on, like, you know, like, stabbed or stabbed. shot. It's yeah. just like that's one of the things, that your lungs we'll, just fill up with blood. We'll just go upside what's, down. What's the worst way to Shut die? Shut up. What's that? Just go upside down. Well, yeah, you Why go was? upside down. How about that? <laughs> what's the worst way? There, what's the absolute worst way to die? I mean, drowning? there's there's like there's like the normal things like drowning, car accident. I mean, like if you want to say worse, like you could be kidnapped and like have all your fingers and your limbs chopped like, off. Like tortured before. Like you that's die. like absolute worst. But I mean, if you mean like in normal means of like common occurrence of dying, for me, the worst thing that I can think of is being stabbed to death, because it just like creeps me out to think like, oh, there's a knife going in me. Like getting, sh I would rather get shot than stabbed. 
Like, ah, I'm shot. Then, like, Ugh! and plus people stab you over and over again. Yeah, it's fucked up. And getting burned to death would also, oh, like, I bad. do not want to get burned. I would absolutely rather get hung up. or drown. Because it's yeah. like, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. I'll take a nap. I'm I don't want to fall. I don't fall out of my place because it's like you're totally fine, most but you have to like come to terms. Yeah, but most things of the time, will not go well for most me. Most of the time, you pass like out while you're falling. If you're falling from like a huge distance, like from a plane you fall or something like that. From a plane, yeah, but you can fall from. Like, I've a had moments yeah, where but it's like pff, you're dead. Have you ever had a moment where you just you know, you just accept death? No, because I've never died. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. But I've had moments where I'm like, well, this is it, and I'm okay with it. Really, you yeah, had moments like that? I was about seven, and uh, I was riding a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> I was riding a donkey on a beach, okay, and it was like plodding along, and then all of a sudden it started hauling ass, and I was like going all over the place. And I was like, I'm gonna let go. This is it, and I let go, fell off. It was fine. I so the seven year old, you <laughs> contemplated <laughs> death, and you yeah. came to terms you with existence. It. I was like, it's okay. You must it's not okay. have much to live for at seven, when you're just like, man, eh, whatever. I had a good run, first grade, about, not bad. Because I had it on my head. The good thing about being seven is that you're bendy as crap. Who oh in the God. motherfuck put you on a donkey <laughs> <laughs> when you were seven years old? I, Gavin dropped his mic, so apparently we lost all of Gavin's donkey well, story. There's a story about donkey. There's a story about Gavin in a foreign country and a donkey. That's all we're going to say. No, well, he was doing the donkey thing, and that's yeah. when it fell off. Oh, uh, is that it's what like, happened? Yeah. He's, all right. We won't tell you if he's on top of the bon uh, donkey or below it. Is there a way that people die that you don't, that you don't believe? Like, that, that could kill you? Anything on a thousand ways to die. Well, actually, no. That all seems like you could die, but I don't think any of it's real. But, like, any way, like, people die, like, I don't know. Um, there's something particular for me that's, like, I still don't believe it would kill me if I did it. What? When people fall off a bridge and land in water, I don't think that would kill you. It, but it kills everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It like, kills most people. It, yeah. Well, like, people, like, jump off the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. I and mean, there's, like, super freak accidents where people don't die. And they're like, no, I'm fine. Well, How there's super freak accidents where people jumping off a building and not dying, too. True. Yeah. Yes. How would you, how would you jump? Would you go in... Head first feet. or feet first? No, you're supposed to go like a pencil. You, you don't want to go pencil. head first. I mean, if you want to survive. Would you hold your... <laughs> like a pencil? Yeah, that's what it's called. When you jump and like, you go totally strict. Nobody calls it that. Nobody I calls it Absolutely, it's been called... Oh, yeah. How's it a pencil drop? Hold absolutely up, what it's called. Hold up, your, hold up your shoe. Hold up, put your shoe up on the table. Put my shoe up on the table. So, what kind of shoe is that? What is that called? This is, what, I have no idea. Well, like, it's not a dress shoe. I have a dress shoe you're wearing. It's eight. a sneaker. You're wearing, what do you call it? Skating shoe. You call it a what? A it's a skating. It's skating, boy. Skating, boy. What do you call it? Tennis shoe. Tennis shoe. Okay. Who plays tennis in? That, I don't know. That's just what you shoes. call it. I call them sneakers, too. Yeah. These well, aren't tennis shoes, though. Tennis are specific. They're like specific looking shoes. They're not tennis shoes. But all. I grew up in the Northeast, like you. So, so what's a, like a running shoe? I, I don't know. Actually, Run I call them trainers. I've never heard that in my life. Running trainers shoes? Trainers anything that is like casual running about shoe. Yeah, that's... Like, that's well, what, I, don't know, I don't know why sneakers are. Like, what, what are you sneaking about? I'm not Nobody sneaks. so minty I kiwi I crunch. Didn't name it. Minty kiwi crunch on Twitter. I think they're from New Zealand. Agrees with you. Everybody calls it a pencil dive. It's a thing. Yeah. See. All right. I stand corrected. The important thing Twitter is, and Michael is right. not to hit your head on unbroken surface water. Yeah. You because you're minimizing the like surface of your body that's hitting the water. No, you I hold your I nose. get. It. I would do it. I just never oh. call it pencil dive. Do you hold your nose to stop water from rushing into your head? I no, mean, I if I was jumping it. off a bridge, no, I wouldn't. When I'm jumping into a pool, yes, because that always happened to me when I was a kid. If I jumped in the pool, water would always shoot up my nose. Yeah, the water's going to shoot up your nose if you jump off a bridge. Yeah, but I'm okay with water shooting up my nose rather than me dying. I mean, yeah, I'll get but over I mean, it. you can still pencil and hold your nose. No, I want both arms, Brandon. I just, saw a I'm video. I'm not going to do one and one. Do <laughs> I could break my elbow. I saw a video of a guy I jumping off. He was jumping off a cliff and did like a double front flip. But for style or over yeah and he went over too far and just like hit his face as he was coming around from the front flip uh -huh. broke his nose and two black eyes just from hitting the water and you think it's really soft yeah yeah it's terrifying yeah well like from a certain height water is like equivalent to concrete it's just like paved yeah that's, that's another stat i don't believe that's but also I, get, I get it i know what happens and i know it's true i just feel like i know if it's I true but i don't believe bridge, it i could land in a way that you i would should try it no because <laughs> i know it kills you i know it but it's like i have trouble believing that i would die from that I was, you're just like watching a video of a guy doing it. You're like, that wouldn't happen. I'm like, stick it, you dude. Just, stick it. You got you it. You just watched it. Yeah. Nah. Or if you fall off a bridge, you're like falling into your water, and you're just like, yeah, I'll be okay. Listen, I had a friend who was so fucking stupid. <laughs> he was in college. <laughs> he didn't believe you could die. <laughs> he didn't believe you could die falling out of a plane. Because he said, if you're falling out of a plane, just find a hill. Yeah, and run, right? And run <laughs> down yeah. the hill. Yeah. Like, just like get the angle and catch it and just run down the hill. <laughs> I don't know why you don't understand that as working. He graduated high school. There's no way, Gavin, you could ever catch an angle on a hill and run down a hill 
you slow wouldn't, yourself you down. wouldn't run to be fair but you would slow down a lot sl a lot gentler yeah you would you... die a huge like you would die a lot gentler is that what you're saying like you would well, just you get would squished no you would you would slow down on the you're assuming the that you're falling at the speed of fall and you can you can angle yourself in such a way that the vector of your force is exactly at the same angle as the... You wouldn't, like, hit it and slide. You'd, like, just slam straight down, whether and the, the slope even, or not. Even the slightest angle, you're... Poof, you're, you're gonna Every time you touch the hill, you will slow down a little bit. What do you mean, touch the, the hill? The initial you impact okay. would kill you. You're coming in like this. It's like, it. you're like... Whoosh, you're coming yeah, in as the no, hill. No, no, no. There's oh. the problem right there. No one falls like this, Gavin, left to right. You're if falling you straight down. Well, so it's like, plane, plane, uh... You don't think you're gonna come out like this, along with the plane. You're gonna be coming out. You're going like this, like you're fucking <laughs> flying left to right, like you're flying the plane. If the plane's going at 200 miles an hour, you're falling with a speed of 200 miles an hour that way. So you're yeah, gonna but hit the wind the ground at the speed of 200 down. miles no, no, an no. hour. But it doesn't matter. It's like even the slightest variation in the angle between the angle okay. you're falling is when still all the damage. When you see someone on BMX and they yeah. go over a hill. Okay. BMX is way different. But, but it's the same principle. If they, they're like, coming over the hill like this, if they land, oh, oh, perfect, they slow down. If they overshoot it and hit the ground, it's like, poof, oh, It's the same principle way that flipping a coin is the same as catching a boulder. It's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. You could maybe get the angle right, just the way you go, oh, there you go, it set it down. It's not gonna happen. You're gonna get fucking smashed. No, I think I'm right. You're an idiot. It's, listen, is it possible? Yes, you're not doing it. I mean, nobody's you doing got it. One, one shot at hill. Yeah, one shot. How do you well, like, um, can you aim for a hill? Did you yeah, play? Yeah, yeah. Did you play that that uh, game on the iPhone called Tiny Wings? Yeah, you're the little thing, and you go. Huh, awesome. and you have to it's exactly that. There you go. No, it's not point that proven. At all. Tiny Wings proved it, Bernie. Why can't you accept it? It's not that at all. How many times did you fuck up on Tiny Wings where you get bump and you didn't get the thing? That was a learned skill. Yeah. You only you don't you don't have time to like. People have a lot curve. of people have a lot of control. Like people who jump out of a plane can pick a point and be like, "That's where I'm gonna land," and they just oh, they steer themselves. Yeah, yeah, they do. I don't think anyone in the history of ever has fallen out of a plane without a parachute and said, I'm going to land there, and done that. And like gone for it and said, I'm going to land in that It's like spot. miles and miles. It's like hard as shit to land in a yeah, spot, Okay, but say, Okay, say you have Dude, this the, much. You showed a video. Remember the video we showed one time of the guy who he parachutes into uh, the University of Michigan Stadium? And it's like it goes from him in the plane to he, he's like an army ranger or airborne or whatever. The, who are the guys who drop in? And uh, he has oh, smoke and all that stuff on him, and he's delivering the game ball. And you realize, like, coming out of the plane, uh, just how amazing it is. He lands on this X, on the f and it's all from his perspective the entire time. He lands on an X in the middle of the football field. It's fucking amazing. Because, say you have... And he makes it look easy, and it's still amazing. Okay, so say, for example, you had 10 degrees of control. I have like, 10 degrees of control. You could, you could go 10 degrees this way or 10 degrees that way. And that's in the air. So on the ground, that means, like, miles either side. Like that this. does that makes it so, harder to be more precise. Yeah, no, no, it doesn't. It means you have a what you can land anywhere. It means you within move one degrees. degree and you're like no, fucking a mile and a half no, off. The, the, but you as say? you get down, but that if you fuck up a little closer. bit, then you're way off. That's what well, you won't. You're gonna be aiming for the same point, and as you get lower, the the window, the area on the ground where you land is gonna become smaller and smaller and smaller until you're just gonna land on that thing. Gavin, yeah. when you bow and arrow, you're shooting a target. Is it easier? What? Is it easier to hit the target? At 10 meters or 1,000 meters? Because what you're saying just applies to shooting an arrow. No, you're doing the Because if you move a little no, variation, no, no. a little variation, then you can cover a bigger distance. So bollocks. it must be easier to hit it. Bollocks, and I'll tell you why. Your words. Say you have uh, a, a archery circle. What I have an target? archer circle. <laughs> target, there you go. You have one here, and you have 12 in a circle around that one. Good. If you're far back, you can hit any one. If you're right pressed up against this one, how are you going to hit the ones that are up there? Because it's like the awkward angle that you're going to be like, you're going to be, sh you're going to miss. Because it's, oh. What's your point? <laughs> Worst <than hell. laughs> I don't even know what that means. How could you, you not have, hit you the have, other one? You have more choice of where to hit when you're further back from it. What I'm saying is that it's less likely you're going to hit something further away because you, what you're saying is correct. A slight variation in your angle throws you way the fuck off. Yeah. And it's more likely that you're going to make some kind of miscalculation early on. Well, yeah, and by the time falling? you're closer, how fast am I falling? Yeah, I'm not you, at all. At I'm point, sitting here in a podcast. How fast do you fall? Like if you hit like terminal velocity, fall, uh, fall out of a plane. How fast are you going to the ground? Oh God, Light I want to say 400 miles an hour. No, because you'd have to equal that. I think it's like in the opposite direction, or sorry, uh, laterally, in order to come out. First like, of all, terminal point. velocity is like one of the most misunderstood. Yeah, we've talked about this before, where people think it's the speed at which you die. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, it's the speed in which you stop after you've been. 
It's like when, the force of gravity will not speed you up. It's when wind resistance and gravity are, are both at maximum, and that's yeah. the that's fastest. There we yes. go. So but what? I think it's 180 something miles an hour. What is the fastest a person can if a uh, fall was the number four within within the atmosphere? Though, if you're in space, no, let's not, nobody's in space. Okay. nobody's in space. Well, if you're higher up, everybody's here. People. If you're really high, you'll fall faster than if you're low. But it doesn't matter because you'll slow down when you get to the ground. All that matters is how fast you're going when you hit the ground. Do you agree okay. with that? Okay. Sure. Compromise, but Gavin is not happy about it. Uh, 220 miles an hour. It dropped from a, a height of 66,000 kilometers. Oh, fair Let's fair. try it. I was Why are we still here? No, you were good. I said 400. I was way the hell off. But you'd still have yeah. to be traveling 200 miles an hour laterally no, you wouldn't. in order to have like a 45 degree angle fall. Why? Because otherwise, you're just fall you're falling like this. Don't hit a 45 degree hill then. Hit like a steeper one. Hit a what? A wall and just ride it straight down? <laughs> <laughs> like, get a pole. <laughs> what are you talking like about? Like Mario. Get some fireworks. Yeah. You'll be great. You basically you go to saved. a playground, just get a slide. You're, yeah. saved, you're saved if you hit a tree. You're saved. No. Yeah, maybe. Hey, tell that to Sonny Bono. A tree. tree could be better off. Who? Sonny Bono. Yeah, Sonny Bono. Don't worry about it. Well, if the branches keep giving way and just slow you down. He follows time. Michael on Twitter. Yeah. This <laughs> American. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean, Bernie? Gavin and I got in a debate about Twitter, about do you, like, they do this thing on Twitter where they have Follow Friday, okay? Do you retweet when somebody mentions you in a Follow Friday? People do this all the time. And I always want to mention on Twitter, like, why do people retweet when they're in a Follow Friday? I agree. Because you're telling everyone who follows you already that right. someone mentioned you in a Follow Friday, which is a thing that people do in order to promote their friends' accounts and stuff like that. That's what it basically is. Yes. So what is the purpose of retweeting there's every, nothing. There's no, really nothing there's other no, than the fact. bragging, like, oh, people like me. <clears throat> yes, yes, I agree. One dude. I'm awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm on a list of 14 people that, for no reason, he just lumped together to say follow so, Friday. Yeah, or, or people do it, like, if they're included in a list with other, like, people that are famous or something like that. Like, ha, yeah. ah, this guy follow Friday, me and this other famous and guy. And Ricky Gervais. Yeah, and Ricky Gervais. Like, mm -hmm. I'm on the same list. But the guy who tweeted it has seven followers, so who cares anyway? So you thought what I did was tacky. What did you do, though? So, d Gavin, just Gavin did something, and I was just honest with you. I thought it was a little too much. I just thought it was a little too much. But he's sad about this. Someone famous in, in the UK m followed Gavin. I've never heard of the guy, but he seems like he's a nice fellow. Comedy legend. I grew up watching him. And he, okay, guy, say there was someone on TV who you watched on TV growing up your whole life. There are people who do that. Then they follow you, and it's like, oh, my God, this dude. And I was excited. He's a, he's a dude from TV. Oh, by the way, the dude was... Bob Mortimer, who is from Vic and Bob, if you're from the UK. Vic and Bob, legends. Shooting stars and all that. Quali. Top. Uvavu. So Gavin, Gavin made a tweet that said, oh my gosh, Bob Mortimer follows me. What a legend. Yeah, and I said, yeah, legend. Right. Because it was my way of saying, thanks for following me. I like you. I'm a fan of you. Was I a dick when I told you I thought that was too much? I well, I don't... said I thought that was too much. I don't know why it's too much. His answer is yes. He's just not saying it. Yeah, you were mad. He, after yeah, he I was, said it, he, he was, was mad. mad. He was mad. He, he was well, mad. you kind of just pooed on my excitement. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm you not did. doing that. I swear to God I'm you not did. doing that. You pooed on it. I, okay. I just thought that that in particular was, I thought that could have been. I, all right. Well, how, sh okay, how should I have handled that? So, I'm like this. You can be excited about it. I don't, know, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Here's my Could thing. Could you give like, us a lesson on Twitter? Tech? I think I thought it was fine. The way he went about it. So I'm like, hey, oh my God, this guy I looked up to follow me. And like. I guess, you know, we were saying, like, it might look like a bragging about it, but, yes. like, even us, as in, like, people at Rooster Teeth, there's plenty of fans that, like, if we, like, tweet somebody or something like that, like, excited fans sure. will be like, oh, my God, uh, you know, Gavin <coughs> tweeted me. I'm so excited or whatever. And they have, like, 30 followers or something like that. But I don't see why just because Gavin has, like, 150,000 followers, it's any less, like, meaningful, where he's just, like, excited that, I don't know, somebody that he looked up to and followed and, like, you know, watched, followed him. I did That's just you. What I've discovered I is that <laughs> take away your happiness. <laughs> I've discovered this since growing older, is that people from my childhood are way more famous than current people who are famous. Like if they were famous when I was a kid, it's like ultra fame for me. For you, like any sort of interaction. That's why when we were on, in Australia and we met Christopher Lloyd, it was amazing to me because I watched Who Framed Roger Rabbit and he used to give me nightmares and scare the shit out of me. It was awesome. It was top. What part of that gave you nightmares? This is really funny. We were on he, a bus. His eyes are popping out of his mask and he's becoming a cartoon again. And we were on well, a bus in a Australia. Cartoon. We had to go back and forth to the convention with all the other special guests of the convention. <clears throat> and it was Christopher Lloyd. And then 
to be nice, it was other people of varying levels of fame <laughs> declining from Christopher Lloyd, <laughs> including us on this bus. And, but it was a lot of people. Like, you would have known a lot of people on the bus. And so we're riding back and forth. About the fifth day of riding back and forth, Gavin goes, look at all these people on this bus. It's like, can you imagine what would the headline be if this bus just drove <laughs> off a culvert and, and never like cliff and we all smashed and died? I said, because can you imagine what the headline would be? I go, yeah, it would be Christopher Lloyd dies in bus. <laughs> 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 that, would, that would be the headline. <laughs> and that's it. It really would. <laughs> uh, sorry, everyone Dude, else. Dan would move on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that was fun. It was, uh, uh, we got to meet him and um, there was somebody else you met on the trip, I remember, too. Well, that was I, we were just watching Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. So we got to meet Alfie Allen, who plays Theon Greyjoy in the Smash TV series, Game of Thrones. And he's awesome. Smash and, it. And, and I don't know if we can, I, probably is okay, probably wait for a spoiler catch for this, but we, when we met him, he was between seasons, and so he was doing something very specific. Keep in mind that he hasn't seen all the way to the end, so okay. careful what well, you say. Three episodes in the season all right. two. We will not spoil. I we just started spoil. watching it. Gavin and Jeff are very excited about it, and the new season starts this Sunday, on Easter Sunday, the 31st. Season three starts. It is such a good show. It's fantastic. Like, I'm just blazing through it. Like, we just watch them back to back to back to back. Everyone loves it as well. It's you so were, good. You were talking to your mother earlier on today. Yeah. And she's like... So <laughs> she, she calls me about something in general, whatever. And Gavin loves, the, like, the interaction between myself and my mother. But, like, the last time we, he tried to, like, film me talking to her, it was, like, a setup because, like, we were at the bar and we were talking about it and I got drunk first. So then I called her and, like, she could clearly tell I was trying to egg her on. And right. she's, like, like, five minutes in, she's like, are you drunk? And I was like, why would you say that? She, she was like, uh, she knows. You been drinking, Michael? Yeah. But today, like, we're just sitting here and so that was that was like maybe a month and a half two months ago today we're at the office we're just waiting to do the podcast and i get a phone call i'm like oh it's oh it's denise gavin immediately just takes out his phone and starts recording it because now she has like lowered sense of security because she's calling me so i can just toy with her so like i'm just like dicking around with her for comedy sake for like five minutes or so and uh eventually i just to, to be an asshole i'm like watch game of thrones she says i'm watching it and she's like Oh, yeah, knowing my parents don't have HBO. She's like, oh, yeah, I've been watching it at your brother's house. I love it. And I'm like, oh, are you serious? And, like, the conversation completely changed. And she's like, oh, I like this guy. That guy's a fucking asshole. He's a piece of shit. And Gavin was just, like, giggling to himself the entire time. Would you ever swear to your parents when you were yeah, growing up? Yeah, I you swore from time to time. Yeah. Oh, yeah I, I never do it. To put it into perspective. Matt's parents hate it. They always comment on the vulgarity <laughs> of the shows. <laughs> I, I know the, that's. I know that's always been an issue for him. The way I <clears throat> I've talked to my mother now, like at a point, like if I'll say something that is just like like really outrageous or like ridiculous, and she doesn't. Jesus, somebody drew Gavin. <laughs> Gavin gagging. <laughs> I look like Jafar. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do look like Jafar. But like, if there's something crazy I say and she doesn't like respond to it directly, she's just be like, yeah, and then just move on. So we were talking about the characters, and I mentioned the the queen, um, the the Lannister. I don't, oh, I don't she's know. awesome. Her name, name is. Uh, well, she's a bitch. But oh, she's so hot. She's though. a great character. God, what is her name? Cersei. 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 There yeah. you go. Yeah. So it so, takes like like five thousand watches to know everyone's name. Yeah. See, that's what Gavin and Jordan both told me that it's watch totally it with easy. subtitles on, and you can learn their names, which is true because they have really weird names, and there's like eighty characters. But I don't want to ruin it by I putting subtitles on. Don't on. do that. That's I a stupid no, idea. Yeah. That's I stupid. switched on subtitles when I couldn't. Tell I people my, fa but my anyway, favorite character. Brilliant. My but favorite character is Jorah Mormont. You yeah. don't hear his name very much. He's the one who watches over Daenerys Targaryen. Yeah. Okay, like, we're gonna get the spoilers. Here. Best character, dude. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's awesome. Like, he's awesome. You love people in shows when they just help you out and know. He's yeah. like, he's like the all knowing. He's like, you don't want to do that. You know? <laughs> he's had a nice. <laughs> you don't want to do well that in front you. of yeah. the Dothraki. Have you seen the guy that does all the imitations? Yeah, of yeah. everyone on Game of Thrones. He's amazing. But real quick though, like so, my we were talking about the Queen. And uh, I'm just like trying to be outrageous because Gavin's filming it. And I was like, I was like, what about that fucking stupid cunt queen? And, my, and my mother goes, yeah, I don't like her. <laughs> That's a response. Whoa. I would get disowned if I said that word. In I would imagine. That's yeah. why I never say it. You she was say like, it. I don't like her at all. I'm like, I know. That's what I'm saying. So is that one of the reasons why none of Matt's characters in Red vs. Blue ever swear? Uh, it's a big part of it. Yeah. Like, even O'Malley never really swears. My, I'm, my parents were, well, both my parents are deceased now, but they were always like Brandon's parents where they just didn't understand what the fuck I did. Like I even, I made a feature film, worked on it for a year and a half. It's called The Schedule. And my parents went and saw it and they was like, 
t- okay, now just tell me what it was about. They couldn't fucking tell me what they about it. I go. You like the spark notes. Yeah, and I even said, I go, Mom, what, what was the name of the movie? What was it called? She goes, The, the Spreadsheet? Pretenders. <laughs> that was a show. Yeah, so she thought it was The Pretenders. Now I'm getting the smell of feet. What did they say about Boner for Murder? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure Matt's parents don't necessarily watch every single frame of Red vs. Blue. And he swears sometimes in the show, you know? He, I remember the man's in put that a memo and called shit I already know. That's yeah. in the second episode. So. He said the F word in one of the episodes that I was involved in. It was way later in the series. He goes, yeah. ah, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was, it was talking to Lopez or something. And everyone in the comments was like, did I just hear that correctly? <laughs> did yeah. I just say the F word? We always twisted stuff up like that. Like One of my favorite payoff jokes like that over the donut. longest period of time was Donut's yeah. payoff. Where Simmons says something, he goes, well, that's gay. <laughs> <laughs> it just was like, the word, I don't think the word gay was ever said anywhere in the whole series, the first yeah. 10 seasons so far, except for Donut says it one time. <laughs> and it just, like, just seemed really funny for that to be the one instance of it. Is he the best character to write? Donut, yeah, Donut's a lot of fun. It, don't, it, it goes character. from season to season, you know? And uh, we're having a big meeting for RBB season 11 tomorrow, so that'll be really cool. Who am I? What's that? Who am I? I don't know. You can be whoever you want to be. What do you yeah. Want to be? Are you bringing my guy back? I we can't see make you. We'll, we'll, we'll take fan suggestions. We'll make you Agent Jersey. There you go. Uh, what? What? It just writes itself, doesn't it? It does. Let's Let me do guess. It. What the hell? Me? Well, fuck you. How about that? Gets, That'll be my line. I'll be like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Don't yeah. I'll nice. be buying something, and I'll be like, fuck you, and I'll just throw change at somebody. <laughs> I, want, my uh, scene. I want it to be a prequel so that Private Joannis can come back. Joannis could live. Yeah? Yeah, and we never saw him die. He died off screen. All right, cool. Well, no one ever dies in science fiction. What's that? No one ever dies in science fiction. No, they do, but you just get the machine that, like, eh. reads the you did the You did the guy that had my name, Gavin. You have a continuum. I did. Yeah. You're Michael Jones. It was like fate. You knew. Bernie planned this, by the way. Speaking of love and all that, do you want to tell everyone? Hell what? yeah. So I went to PAX East. I was wandering around, right? Uh, some various booths for a purchase in there. And I saw this at the booth. And uh, I'll highlight it here. I have this, uh, this diamond uh, pendant from Minecraft. Not actual diamond, but replica of the diamond. Lest from, you be from, fooled. <laughs> yeah, no. It is not real diamond, ladies. Um, oh, there, oh, there we go. So it's uh, the diamond pendant from Minecraft. So I saw this at a stand, and I walk up to it, and uh, there, was only, there was only two different kinds. All they had was the diamond and the creeper. And I figured, like, Gavin's... Boosh. Not, yeah. Uh, zoom in there. Gavin, Gavin's that. the creeper there in the show. Uh, you know, he's always a creeper in the last place. So I was like, you know, I, I'll buy the diamond and the creeper, oh, and it'll be really stupid. And like, Gavin team up. Gavin and I, when we team up, we call it Team Nice Dynamite. And I'll be like, that'll be our thing. It's like the Wonder Twins. It'll be like Team Nice Dynamite. So I asked the guy, I'm like, oh, how much are those? Uh, and he's like, $20 each. And I was like, God damn it. Like, <laughs> that's a lot for like a stupid piece of plastic. And I was like, that's more than the game. Yeah, all right, I'll buy it. <laughs> so I spent $40 on two stupid pendants for Gavin and I just to wear while we filmed the Let's Play. So I was wearing this today because Michael gave it to me and I thought I'd wear it because it's a laugh. But I was wearing a different shirt this morning. But then Brian gave me this shirt to wear because we took the pictures of me wearing this. And I, w- I took this shirt into the bathroom so I could change. Took off my other shirt and all I could see was me without a shirt on but wearing this. <laughs> By far the gayest thing I've seen all year. I, I, I laughed out loud. I don't no, think the pendant like... has anything to do with it, honestly. <laughs> it's like a fur pelt and a creeper chain. Yeah. Did you, like, yeah. put your hands on your hips? No, I don't admire yourself. I, then I took that off. <laughs> Did you hiss? Yeah. Look That's at that, man. See? There you go. Hold look at you. Head. You look all, like, uh, you got kind of, like, a... a, a Kind of a, a British look, a going brooding on. kind of uh, hotness to you. Yeah, that's not that's me. Oh, yeah. the Tower of Pimps. It's kind of ironic that you're wearing the Tower of Pimps shirt because you've only won it once. No, he made it though. That's bullshit. He made it, but he just can't get it. I just can't win the damn. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> well, competition. Yeah, you competition only, is. You've only done what fifty-four? How many have you done? Now? No, we've done like forty-five, I think. I, I saw think forty-three was last. Oh, time is it? Well, we have God, I was watching ahead. the first one, which is now up to like five point six million views for the first one. I don't think it's. Is it Jeez. that high? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, I think uh, you're right. It was, t- it was 10 months ago you put that out. Does this seem like 10 I months think it ago? Was, I think it was May 11th. May 11th of Which 2012. Which is a date of note for me because that's the date I signed up on roosty.com or is red really? blue.com as it was by then. Yeah. So on, on May 11th will be the one year anniversary of Minecraft and the 10 year anniversary of me signing up on your site. Huh. Brandon, are you reading something or can I tell a story Brandon about Pax? face. Uh, how long <laughs> that was, that was my subtle burp face. <laughs> Let me go ahead and read this first. Uh, um, where's my camera? There it is. Hey. He's so, look at his teeth. They're so white. I know. It's nice. Uh, do you back up your computer files as often as you should? Can you access your files anytime, anywhere? You should try Carbonite Online Backup. Carbonite is a backup uh, service that's automatic and continual. 
You can access your backed up files on any computer, on your smartphone or tablet with a free Carbonite app. Unlimited backup space for your PC or Mac is just $59 a year. <laughs> and if you run a small business, Carbonite has plans that will back up all of your computers, servers, and external drives for a low, flat annual fee. Start the trial today at Carbonite.com. No credit card required. Use offer code ROOSTERTEETH and get two free bonus months if you decide to buy. That's Carbonite.com. Offer code ROOSTERTEETH. Now I have like 10 hard drives on my desk all the fucking time. Yes, you do. Do you have... Okay. Well, that's pointless. And I would love it. It's because like, I, I have to have access to no, them. No, 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 no. Brandon, I would love if they were on your desk. They're not always at your desk. They're always like your feet and shit like that too. You're always kicking them over. We have... We had a... I, I, with my ideas, so I think it's brilliant. We bought one kind of drive. We buy that same drive every single time. So we have the same power supplies and the same cables. Theoretically, that's the way it's supposed to work. But you have like stacks of those drives. I need around. them. You don't you need 10 drives at once. You have a working drive, maybe a secondary drive, and then the no, rest is archived. No, but it's archive. like everything we do, like it's just like it's all scattered. Like, put it archive. on the radio or something. Put it on the network. I will say this though. Every time somebody comes to us, like we had that TV network here last week. We talked a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, well, Spice. we... What? Spice Network? No, it wasn't Spice oh, Network. Okay. Don't say the name of the network. <laughs> uh, we, um, we had a... It's not Spike. He was. He wasn't hinting at anything. Spice. He wasn't. He wasn't hinting at anything. Spice was the adult anything. film thing. Uh, what is Spice? Spice TV. It's like Playboy. Spice TV. I haven't seen it. Sounds like a Spice Girls channel. But wow. they said, "Oh, that. we need some B-roll footage for just random stuff." And I, just like I always do, when anyone needs any footage, you go, "Oh, Brandon has got." Like yeah. Brandon has immediate access to our entire and library was, of B-roll. And it was none of the same thing. It was scattered across everything. So I have like ten hard drives on my desk. So if it was all in the invisible world. Like where I can My life grab at it. this point, I think, is worth 35 terabytes. Yeah? Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. How? Wait, wait. Well, I just, I just, it's, it was high like definition. Probably four terabytes of personal stuff, like photos and videos. I have every single Rooster Teeth video that was ever released. But then I, st I started shooting slow mo okay. stuff, which, which shoots at eight gigs per second. So I tear through hard drives. I thought you meant like your memories, if you, no. you can it all. My up. mind is definitely not 35 terabytes. You guys want to hear about some stuff happening like down at PAX? Megs. Did you guys yes. see anything cool at PAX? I saw a dude dressed as Mr. T. That was awesome. Oh, did you even Was it Mr. You know, T? Mr. T joined Twitter a couple weeks ago, and I just like... No, uh, I mean, it wasn't Mr. T himself. No, I know. What's his name? What's the T? Uh, that's it. Just it's Mr. just Mr. T. T. That's What's it. his name? I don't think I have no knows. idea what the guy's name is. Look at every, I'm every, sure nobody somebody knows. knows. Somebody knows. It's on Wikipedia. Birth Maybe name. it's like Theodore. Yeah? <laughs> Tiberius. Tiberius? Uh, it might be. Cornelius? I'll look him up. He used to make the joke that his name was... First name was Mr. Last name was T. His middle name was that little period. <laughs> I can't believe that old joke made you laugh. <laughs> He's not doing anything. I didn't know. I, I don't know. I, I didn't that. really wait in line for anything in PAX. So I just kind of walked around and like looked at all the like the crap that had out like just on display and stuff. I will say, you know what I saw right in the entrance? That giant firefall thing. Yeah. That, like that huge piston that was just loud as shit. It was and like, I, a, like a moisture farm or something. Yeah. And I and there was like there would like be like smoke that would come out of it. And I felt bad for like the two girls that were working there because it was loud as shit. And it would just repeat over and over again. And there was like a speaker. Like I can't imagine how that whole thing cost. Like how much that whole thing cost. Like it was some big elaborate like standee. Yep. And they had like all these models that apparently were like uh, like full size models that were like made from like like human likenesses that like people like model for and everything. Yep. And, uh, like, it just went, like, and it would just go for, like, two minutes, stop, and then just repeat over and over and over again forever. I so, saw that. Yeah, I saw the same thing. It's just, anytime somebody's around something that's super repetitive like that, I also feel terrible for them. Just absolutely terrible. I don't know the fiction of Firefall, but it's, like, some kind of, like, gas mining thing. Yeah, it was, like, like a, some like sort piston. of drill or something yeah. that was, like, pounding into like the ground. Doom, doom, and then, like, this little doom. door would open, like, and then the door would close, and then it would rewind, and the lights got, would go off. And I got away again. from it really fast. Well, I noticed they didn't put it near their booth. No, it, it was there. nowhere near the booth. It was, I kept ending up there because I, I was, like, meeting friends and hanging out with friends a lot since I was there on vacation. And, like, every time we got separated, it'd be, like, let's meet near the firefall thing because it was right at the main entrance, and it wasn't very crowded because most people were on the exhibition floor so i stood next to that thing like five times while i was there god I, I, why would you do that why not pick somewhere else because i'm a else? stupid asshole <laughs> i'd say meet by the bathrooms on the third floor they were that. in that very same area though handing out free <laughs> five hour energy so i was grabbing a bunch of those yeah they had out a bunch of free stuff like they were a big thing they were handing out this time at the convention was vivran the caffeine pills they were like i guess that's coming back now People are big on energy these days yeah because just sleep a bit more dude we don't have time for sleep Although I have to Red Bull before a podcast. Yeah, you're yeah, just drinking I'm, that. I'm addicted.
Did you, speaking of meeting up at things, did you ever hear, you know, who, you know who Steve Merchant is, right, Bernie? Yeah, of course I do. Co-writer of The Office. He's Wheatley in Portal. He's six foot seven. And he was telling a story once when he was on radio about how these two girls came up to him while he was at a party. He was just walking around with a balloon. And these two girls came up to him and he was like, hey, ladies, how's it going? And they're like, no, no, no don't worry, we're just, uh, just going to stand here. And then he, he eventually found out that <laughs> before that, them and two other friends had arranged to meet back at him because he was so tall and he could be seen <laughs> wow. there. Wow. So like, no, don't worry, we're just, we're just meeting at you. You're shitting yeah. me. Because <laughs> he was six foot seven on the balloon. He, had this, like, he was a landmark in this party. <laughs> he should have just moved around yeah. as much as possible. He was, he was a moving That's target. Yeah, you could said. find him anywhere though. Yeah. It's like, just meet at the tall guy. Oh, I just can't. Is. I just can't imagine anything more insulting <laughs> than, really than two hot girls meeting at you. <laughs> He's a really funny guy. Yeah, I funny. saw him live once. He was very good. Yeah? One of the coolest things I saw at PAX was for you. Um, I ran into... Everybody's here to play Mass Effect. Brandon, you probably haven't. Mm -hmm. So there's the woman who was the voice model and face model for the Justicar, Samara. The Hot? Yeah. Well, she, she cosplays as Samara at events all the time. But like, she'd win any competition to do that. I, I have no idea. So she, like, shows up... And she looks just like the character in the game. I mean, she like, is the character. Because she game. is the fucking <laughs> yeah. character. I mean, spot on. It's really creepy. What? She sounds like her too. Did you ever see that com comparison of everyone in Half Life Two with their actual real life person? Yeah, and what side was by it? side. But the, but Gordon Freeman doesn't have one, right? Well, no, Gordon Freeman doesn't have a face. But they really, had like, is Alex based on somebody? Yeah. Oh, e every no. single person is like, oh, that's that dude. And w walking down the street, you would recognize them as Eli or whatever or Alex. Really, because yeah. I've seen that not with uh, the Half-Life 2 characters, but with the Left 4 Dead 2 characters. I've seen them in real life. Gordon Freeman doesn't have a dude? Well, he doesn't have a model. He has, like, cover art, doesn't he? But he's not actually got a face in-game. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, but he's based, you know, he's, he looks like somebody. He's, a, he's got a human face. Yeah. Yeah, but is that based on anyone? I, I don't, don't know. know. I'm, I'm asking I don't think you. It's, I think it's just a dude. Like, what about You're the making outrageous Paul? claims. I'm just asking. I don't know Do you watch that. Walking Dead, right? Do you know yeah. that Tyrese in The Walking Dead is the voice actor for Coach in Left 4 Dead? Oh, I didn't know that. No. Yeah. Yeah, listen, you'll hear it now. If, like when he was, this last week when they're arguing about the pit. Remember? Or was maybe that was the week yesterday before? Yesterday or the week before? Maybe it was the week before. Because I haven't watched, I haven't watched yesterday's yet. I just watched a couple of them back to back. So it might have been yeah. the week before. Was it the one when like shit went down at the pit? Yeah. Yeah, that was last week. Yeah, he, you can totally hear, go back to that scene, you'll totally hear Coach in his voice. Huh. Absolutely. There's like when like something happens, does it go, incinerator? <laughs> he goes, I'm out of my mind. Yeah. yeah. No, he was good. It was, uh, it was, if you go back and look at it, I'm curious what they're doing with Tyrese in Walking Dead. Yeah, it's, he's very different from the graphic novel. So you read the graphic novel. I've read like the first maybe 60 or 70 issues. Or episodes, Is this a new character? Tyrese? He's uh, a few weeks ago. He's, a, three. he's way big in the graphic novels, and yeah, he showed huge. up super late uh, in, the, in the show. And has a completely different role in completely the show different. than in the graphic Is novel. Is he the guy who bashed his wife's head in with a hammer? I uh, don't know. Oh, that's you mean the guy in the town? The guy that he meets in the first episode? No, it was the what guy who showed up about, at the Brandon? Who's this? Who's Tyrese? Tyrese is the black guy that shows up at the prison and Rick chases him off with a gun and he takes him and his people and they leave. And then he ends up in the town. He wears a Oh yeah, hat the guy from the wire. On his right? head. The guy maybe from the wire. He Love wears him. usually yeah. like a beanie. Yeah. No, I got Yeah, okay, be black dude. No, I didn't know who he was. I was trying, to, I was trying to figure out if he just came into the show. We're like, he's the guy. Wait, he's the guy who came into the show the same episode that killed the last black guy. There you go. You gotta watch I'm out. Serious. Yeah, it's, it's exactly what happened. You gotta watch Big out what son happens. offered to put uh, this guy's wife out of misery with a, a gun, like a bullet. All right, it's like not get too much into spoilers. Don't walking spoil. dead current season stuff. But I will say this: in <clears throat> uh, Walking Dead, the graphic novel, Tyrese is more like Daryl. That's how big a character he is in the graphic yeah. novels. Daryl yeah. doesn't exist in the graphic novels. Yeah. He's not a, he's not a character. Because he's kind of like, he's kind of like, I don't want no trouble. I apologize. You know, it's like, I'm just trying to fit in. Like, yeah. that's just kind of his character in the show. He's kind of like fucking crazy in the graphic novel. Like, just shows up and just beats ass. Yeah. Beats ass. He beats ass. Zombie ass. Zombie face. Zombie hey, dick. Hey, Michael. What? You're from New Jersey, right? I'm from New Jersey. So, yeah. you're kind of a scumbag. I guess. Like, people are scum like, scumbags are from New Jersey. Yeah, sure. Did you ever shoplift? Did I shoplift as a child? Yeah, did yes. you ever nick stuff? Yeah. What'd you nick? Just random crap. Candy gum. Yeah, just shit. Stupid yeah. shit. I've never done it. Do you know how easy that is? I did yeah, because I, I did it. You did it too? Like a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. So once I bought this coat from, some, it was probably Next or some crappy shop, but they didn't take off the security tag. 
I guess, and I walked out with it in the bag and it set the alarm off and I didn't realize. So I have this security tag on this coat. And that year, I probably set off maybe 200 alarms in various stores. Not a single one checked Nobody my bag shit. to see if I had stolen it. How, how old were you? Oh, this was like two years ago. I was 21, 22. Right. See, like, those things came out forever ago, right? Like the, the little, let's put the tag things on the clothes. So it goes beep, 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 beep when it I goes out. I put those in my friend's pockets. Right? By the way. And people are like, oh, shit, somebody's stealing something. Like, freeze, motherfucker, like when you hit it. And then they realize, like, it sucks, and it goes off all the time. So, like, that technology was, like, completely abandoned, like, yeah. two years after it came out. No one fucking cares. Like, if something goes beep, 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 you kind of just, like, stop. Like, at the gr- it still happens, like, at Walmart. If I walk out, it's like beep, 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 beep. I'll just kind of look around. Either, A, no one will be there. I'll wait for, like, 30 seconds and just be like, okay, yeah. and leave. Or, like, someone will be like, yeah, just... Just go. Yeah, that's, it, that's the move. It's Nobody like you, cares. You make Nobody eye contact with somebody and that person what a, like that. What a waste of technology. I wanna, so Nobody I wanna, cares. I want to buy something, have that go off, and run. And oh, like, you yeah. know, they, they like have the check. Catch I used me, to they do catch that me, too. Like, show me a receipt. To be an asshole, I would do that. Like, if it went off, I would stop and look around, like, oh, and then There's just run There's an out Australian the door. thing like that where they just, they, they run, see if they can't run security guards. Yeah. 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 Urban, what's it called? Something? Urban rodeo. Yeah. You don't do anything illegal. Yeah, they just like run circles around. But that was the thing, like, Maybe of, of the 200 I set off, there was 100 occurrences where the thing didn't even go off. Yeah. So I would just walk through and nothing would happen. Or like the most reaction I would get, I would walk out and someone would look at me and I'd be like, the coat, and I'd keep walking. Yeah. Nobody ever checked anything. I want to just steal stuff now. I want to become like see, a... See, now you're a piece of shit though. Why? You see, you see it's you're all 20, just confidence. You're, you're, you're 24 years old. But that's the thing. If it I doesn't was, matter though. If I was like sneaking out like a criminal... I would be arrested because I'd look suspicious. If you have that confidence of like, nah, didn't do it, straight out. I, it's so funny yeah. too because I was at a party this time where there was a party I didn't know about and you had to be on a list to get in the party. And so this was at <laughs> PAX East. Because you're in the phase of doing this thing where you just like to mess with people. You just I like do. to interact in obscure ways. Hmm. Like the other day we were going out to dinner with that TV network. You're calling up this place for reservations. And I guess, they, did they not have any reservations or something? Well, like I asked, was, do you take, I, it's like I said to Gavin, you get in these conversations all the time where you know exactly how it's going to go. It's almost like you're final following a social script. And I'm just, in my point in my, my life now, I won't follow the social script anymore. Yeah. It's like, hey, do you guys take call aheads? And they, of course, say, no, your whole party has to be here to sign up. And I go, well, do you take reservations? And they said, no, we're booked up for the rest of the evening. So you said, I think the guy's name was something. Like, Nick. Uh, Nick. I think like, it was probably something. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, Nick, I'm going to need you to go ahead and just throw that all out just for us. <laughs> make an exception. And then he was like, he didn't say anything. You're like, all right, we'll see you in a sec. <laughs> like, you just like to mess with people like that now. And it's the most fun to be around. You just being like off with people. Like you hate the thing where people turn on the lights when we're at a bar because and, it's time to kick everyone out. Well, it's 2 o'clock and they yeah. turn the lights on? Yep. Fuck them. They did, yeah. that, they did that at the, uh, at the hotel um, restaurant that we were at when it, they were closing at like 1 a.m. All the lights came on. It's so and fucking And it was like, that rude. means get the fuck out. Yeah. It's it's like, thanks for your money. Like, get the fuck it's out. It's like someone might as well walk up to me and be like, hey, how you doing? Get the fuck out of exactly here. Exactly right. That's exactly what it is. Because yep. I was there, uh, again, with a friend, and he just turned 21. So, uh, of course, we got just wasted at the bar. And uh, he's like, oh, what does that mean? I'm like, that means uh, get the fuck out now because they're closing. Piss off. And that's happened a couple of times in Austin where one time they flick the lights up and you just stood up and you're like, God, what are you doing? (laughs) Like really annoyed. (laughs) I was 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 yelling across the bar. (laughs) And there was another time where they did it. It was just you and I that time. And the guy was like, thanks for coming, guys. And you're like, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Prick. Well, you'll appreciate this because I got got, like this party we were going to. I didn't know it existed until the day of. And it's like, you're on the list. It's like, no, no, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So I call people, get on the list or whatever. And so I'm outside the club, and it's like, there's people inside. Nobody can hear their phone inside the goddamn club. So we're outside. We're hanging out. And it's like, well, you know, can you, he, I'm going to come down and talk to this guy, get you on the list. This person's going to get you on the list. <laughs> there was somebody who is, could get me on the list, and they weren't going to do it. I, I'm amazed at people's ability to hold a grudge. I can't do it, but it's amazing how someone can hold a grudge. And just, like, not be helpful in any way. So it was, like, five minutes of this stuff to the doorman. And it's, like, he's, like, well, your friend's coming out to get you on the list. I'm, like, no, he's coming, whatever. And he's, like, he's like, we well, can't get in until you get on the list. I said, okay, well, I'm just going to go in then. And he goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All of this for fucking nothing. Just, like, fuck it. Just walk in. Fuck Gavin. this. Fuck the whole procedure. Let's just go in. Gavin's kicking beer. And beer. It's an empty bowl. Chill out. Yeah, but, you know, you're. But you will appreciate this. I took it. I think I took it to a whole new level, okay? 
uh, this weekend because this, I think you saw a tweet that Ashley made. She's like, oh, shit, I got Bernie drunk. I have drunk Bernie here. What have I done? Yeah. And that was because we were out. She had an event, and I was kind of like, Saturday was like her day. She works at IGN, and she had a lot of stuff. So I was like kind of helping her out at the con, and like, we, like she, was, she had a lot of cool stuff that she was doing for social media. She had a really good idea where she was attending the con for people who couldn't be there. Like she was on Twitter to all the people at IGN and saying, hey, uh, I'm walking the floor. What do you want to see? And they'd say, go see Injustice. And she'd say, okay. And so she'd go take like a Vine of Injustice, like the Batman fighter game, whatever it is. But like people wanted to see stuff and know about stuff or she'd go interview a developer real quick. So she was doing that all, kind of stuff all day. So it's like you're specifically making content that people want. Yeah, it's like yeah. she's a proxy kind of for yeah. being at the con for people who can't be there. Like for the floor itself, like, but live at that time. Uh, anyway, so they had a cool meet and greet later in the day. Our kind of style of event where it's just a bar and they rented out and they did it with Double Fine and I got to meet Tim Schaefer. And that was really cool because I, I'm a huge fan of his stuff. Like, He's made like Monkey Island, Full Throttle, tons of really cool stuff. And uh, so we were just sitting there like not doing anything. I was just sitting there drinking and chatting. I didn't have anything to do with this event, but just sit there. So I got to that part where I was like right at the edge of drunk, right there at the edge. And the event was over and we were going to leave to meet our people for dinner. And I was like, oh, I got a full drink in my hand. And I just slammed it. There you go. That was it. That's that what was, happens. God, and you just reached that tipping point where it's just like, what do you do, man? But that's the best drink of that night. Any night, the first drink is kind of meh because you're sober and it's you're drinking true. booze. It's like, I don't really like the taste of this. But Case in point, this yeah. podcast. Right. Right. But that one where you're, you're feeling the drunkness and you know that the next drink is going to throw you into drunk, that's the best one. That is, that is drink prime. Monty, you drink could probably... You, so I showed up at dinner and Monty was there. Monty, you want to get in the hot seat and talk to us a little bit? Monty Ohm. Um, Mo Monty, get back up. So, you're, so, you're screwing him because the light went off. After this, <laughs> after that event... Then I went to go meet the, the Rooster Teeth group at dinner. They had a group dinner that night. And uh, so I walked in, and the way Barb described it was, because everyone had to reconstruct these events for me, is I walked in to the middle of the restaurant, walked up to our table, and went to them. And I walked up, and I go, you're all drunk. And then the <laughs> Barbara goes, uh-oh. So, nice. Then I spent, I don't know, I was sitting next to Monty. I remember at one point, they refused to give me dinner or something. The, the, who did? The way. Oh, really? Ash started like water There was foul play involved, is what he's saying. They were, they were, they were trying to slow me down. They were tricking you. I, I wouldn't have. This it, is though. what Barbara texts me. Go ahead and read that out. Uh, oh, Barbara wrote, and I, I kind of remember doing this, is that. I stood up oh, at dinner where all the, everyone's there. They've been working so fucking hard. They had this crazy thing where they had to, like, get their flights canceled. They had a road trip from LaGuardia in New York all the way Fuck to Boston. That. They were all, like, yep. completely miserable by day two. Not miserable, but just, like, like exhausted. exhausted. And so I stood up. Owner of the company, I stood up. I held my glass up to everyone at the table. Everybody, like, stops and looks at me. And I go, I am Catbug. <laughs> <laughs> I slammed my drink and sat down. Barbara said she laughed for about 20 minutes after did, that. Did you see my, what I wrote to her in, no, but you're in right. response to that? What? Prepare for the fulcrum? Yeah. Yeah. That was coming. But the real, the real thing that happened was after that. So now this is totally reconstructed by me. So the, Bethesda, the people who make Elder Scrolls, Skyrim, Elder Scrolls Online was a big what game. What a game. Yeah, very good game. Um, they're promoting Elder Scrolls Online. They had a big party. They had these like parchment invitations that they gave out. Ooh, fancy. And so Ashley knew some people there, so she goes, hey, we're going to go to this party, but you're pretty drunk, so I'll just keep an eye on you. We'll be there for just a little bit, and then we'll go. And I said, aces, let's do it. So we <laughs> go, so we go, and I'm, I mean, I really had to have a lot of people help me reconstruct this the next day. So I'm doing that thing where I'm like standing like this, like teetering, like, like that. Just weeble walking, yeah. not falling over. So we get to the party, and Ashley says, she goes, stay here. She goes, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. She goes, I'm gonna be gone two minutes. Don't, don't do anything. Don't talk to anybody. Just stay right here. I'll be right back. So I'll, go, I'll go to the bathroom with you. She goes, no, 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 no. She goes, just stay here. I'll go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. I have to go to the bathroom. So I said, okay. She said she went to the bathroom. She came back from the bathroom. Two minutes had passed. That was it. And she said, I had bags, <laughs> I had bags of popcorn, like that I had just had collected bags of popcorn, and that I was going up to people while they were having conversations at their tables, and I would give them a bag of popcorn. I'd go, Hey, here, take this popcorn. You're too drunk. You have to go now. 
you have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> you have to leave. And people were leaving. <laughs> oh my god! I was kicking people out. <laughs> 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 was this the part? <laughs> You're already pushing the limits. So <laughs> get away with. I, Jesus. I had a dude come up to me at our booth the next day, and he goes, "Bernie, I just want to apologize." He goes. Because I had a little bit too much to drink oh, at, the, shit. at the party, and you kicked me out. He goes, <laughs> you, gave us, you gave me, you gave me a bag of kettle corn. Oh, dude! Oh, dude! He really put him the time of, time of his life on his back Hey, hey! Get out of here! Get out of here just like corn. Get out of here, You're buddy! You're too drunk. You need to go home. <laughs> And, and it was really like, so people are like, I am kind of drunk. <laughs> That's like the most ironic superhero ever. <laughs> I've seen you when you're drunk, though, and you are not a good hider. But you're <laughs> like, you know that thing where you're like, <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. You are, you gotta leave. Get out. <laughs> you you make, you're you're making me sick. I'm gonna throw up looking at you. <laughs> Take your drinks and leave. Get out. <laughs> No, no. Monty, Monty's all hooked up. So yeah. Monty oh, my God. Me, so, Monty, Monty, listen, Monty, I want to apologize because you had to sit next to me through all of dinner. No, it was awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> At one point, Monty, I started eating the, the clam shells that Monty had. I don't think plate. I've seen Bernie that drunk before. You didn't yeah. drink, do you, Monty? No, I do not. What's your choice uh, behind coffee. that? I had three. I had like three la lattes that night. Oh, check it that out. Was, caffeine it was boy. the best. It was, that was the Saturday, right, Bernie? The, the Sanchi party? That was Saturday. Yeah, uh, Sanchi Party was Saturday, yeah, yeah, Saturday night. You didn't go to that, did you? No, the, you guys all went to that, and I went to the Bethesda thing, yeah. Oh, I didn't go to it either. You were busy throwing people out of another party. <laughs> I was enforcing. Did you, like, grab one of the scrolls, and you were like, I do hereby <laughs> decree that you are expelled from my everybody's, court? Everybody's banished. Exile <laughs> yourself from the kingdom. In, 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 in my defense, Ashley caught me really quickly in the process. I had a lot of popcorn. She only down. threw out a few people. <laughs> It would have been cool if all those people. <laughs> it would have been great if all the people that you kicked out formed their own like anti Bernie party. <laughs> but the guy, out. I gotta find yeah, out the name of the guy. Popcorn to if, go he's listening, <laughs> if he's listening, it was the guy. One of the guys I threw out happened to be a fan. And yeah. So he came the next day to the booth and was like, "I'm really sorry. I had, had a little bit too much to drink." <laughs> and you were like, "Get out!" <laughs> I hope you don't think any less of me. <laughs> you're, a, you're a piece of shit. Are you proud of this? <laughs> no, that's it awesome. Was, it was pretty funny. Though. That was awesome. It was pretty funny. That's awesome. You're I mean, anybody who fell for that was drunk too. I was so... Was it Monty? Was there a moment when it was not clear that I was drunk? No, you... you the, the moment you walked in, it was very, <laughs> very apparent. And also the waiter like didn't serve me for like 20 minutes. He gave... You, you were like... He was like, I'll bring you a plate. Or uh, your plate is coming. And you're like... It's gonna have food on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a really nice person, I promise. I promise I am. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, Shane. Yeah. Shane, what did you think of PAX? I thought it was awesome. It was really cool to meet the fans. Were you at the, were you at the panel? Yeah. yeah I opened up. You opened up the panel? I was so I disappointed that you didn't play Minecraft. Yeah. Some lady came up to the table and was like, do you play Minecraft? And I was like, no. And she got mad. Well, to be fair. <laughs> and gave me a look. You deserve that reaction, though. You should yeah. play Minecraft, Shane. I don't really understand. 2013, Shane. Come on. Gavin's got a friggin' Minecraft pendant, right? Boop. Wait, Team Nice Dynamite, in effect. Oh, go on then. That's right pretty cool. All right, so what else, Put guys? It. Tell us about the reaction of the Ruby trailer. How'd you feel about that? How Did you guys see anything at the show that you liked? What? Did you guys see anything of the show that you liked? How did you oh, feel about man. the reaction of Ruby Black? Ruby Black was awesome. It's my favorite one because like, we're just like, you know, working it, make, giving it more content and stuff. Uh, we actually did an interview where we talked about how like, um, you know, the way, the way it was skewed is like insinuates things that are just like so invisible. And if you just spend time looking at it, you'll, you'll be able to analyze a few things here or there. I, but uh, PAX itself was freaking phenomenal. I don't know what it was about this PAX. But it was just so cool. There's a lot of more interactivity, and uh, and like you didn't go to the uh, you didn't go to the Sanchi party. I went for like five minutes, and then I ditched it. And went, oh, take it easy. I ended up at <laughs> <laughs> I ended up at the Curse Gaming party, and there was this. I, I if you, if someone out there has the footage for that, I ended up in like three dance circles. Gavin, you would have loved it. I would have loved that. Yeah. <laughs> Why you hate dancing, don't you? No, but he likes watching me dance. Yeah, oh. I mean, it's good. It's good. It's entertaining. <laughs> well, when he's not trying to take off my shirt, he's well, really entertaining to watch. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what Gavin likes about you when you're dancing, Monty, is you're not trying to disrobe him constantly. <laughs> well, because I can't do that. Like I can't I can't get my groove on if I'm sober because it's like 
holding a drink, I'm like, mm -mm -mm. but you know, a couple of drinks in, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and and then um, be, uh, best best part of PAX was uh, meeting a lot of ladies. It was I, I got to give a shout out to. Uh, uh, my shout out portion of the podcast, Mon Ray first ever proud. RT podcast. Monty Ohm shout out. Amy, Amy, Linda, and Cat. You shout are out proud. to Amy, Linda, and Cat. <laughs> this part's very entertaining for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey Monty. All right. Hey Monty. What's up? So the thing I like about the Ruby trailers is that it's something I've discovered. If you if you print screen at any point in any of those trailers. It's like a desktop background. Yeah, it's like yeah. it looks good enough to be like. Yeah, see, like you could print screen that, and that'd be a perfect background right there. Yeah. I, I, I like. I, I go in and polish every single goddamn frame. It's like. It's, yeah. It's, it's it's really. Swear about it. What brand of polish do you use? Oh, fucking. Oh, shut up. Hugh. Well, this was a uh, this was a unique trailer in the Ruby series. Yep. Because this was the first one to have dialogue. Yep. Any any get any feedback on that? What do people think about that? Oh uh, well, you know, it's it's mixed. I like my my thought is. You know, you know how anime fans are kind of the way where they'll e they'll either like it or hate it. It's very black or white about this sort of thing. And the people who like it, they would have liked it regardless of the quality. They just they just not used to seeing like like that aesthetic. I've I've been well, I mean, there are very few animes I'll watch in English. I think it's very uh, I think it's very important that we started layering dialogue in somebody's trailer just because the Absolutely. show is. If if I could go back to trailer one and have dialogue, I would have. It's like. Trailer 1 was made directly after RVB Season 10, before we even knew who the actors were. Trailer 2, you know, just the same. We were we were busy with a bunch of different things, and I actually had to, you know, pull Kara away, like when she was when she was free to, uh, you know, do a little bit for uh, for 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 the white trailer. So like this time, we actually, you know, managed to plan some things ahead and get some dialogue in because we're in the middle of doing our recording sessions and. <laughs> A lot of the dialogue coming out is great. We've got like whole episodes cut, and they're they they really they really pop. Shane, how'd you feel about it? Any anything to add there? Shane, we did a funny thing at the beginning of the panel where we had Shane go out by himself, and he was like representing the entire panel, and it was like thirty seconds of dead silence while Shane just stared back at the audience. You you guys made me do that one year as well. Oh it yeah. Was, uh, it was Pax Prime. Well, it wasn't Prime because there was no East, but it was two thousand seven. Were you like twelve? You just sent me out there. And I didn't realize how many people had sat down since I came in. <laughs> so I walked out and the light was on my face. I was like, uh, Gus. <laughs> and Gus comes out and I introduce you all. Yeah, I think we made you, I think we made you do that just to see how you react in front of the crowd. It was, yeah, like, it was bloody scary. The, uh, the PAX panels are enormous. I mean, it's like, I think it's like 5,000 people. And yeah, that's it was in, a few thousand. Yeah. It was awesome. Trying. What we can expect from the, uh, the yellow trailer? What? Well, we, we were actually like that night, went back to the hotel room, started like doing, like working on yellow trailer stuff. Uh, more, you know. I mean, we try to we try to have as much variety as possible. I mean, why why do the same thing over and over? And like I said at the panel, you know, it's like these trailers aren't just trailers, but the best. There's not not a better word for them. They're more like vignettes for the character. Like the Ruby trailer was like a whole resume for her weapon, you know. And we actually, you know, we were still discovering her character, so it was really more about like the move set for her weapon. Whereas this time around, since we're we're even more fleshed out, we can actually do a little bit of a story. And so, you know, by the time we get to yellow, it's, I, I compare them to like the Team Fortress meet does, except kind of in reverse, because Team Fortress is a game and you spend most of the time running around shooting stuff and they only take this apart moment to do the meet does and actually have these character moments, but they still work. They still like, they're in character for the, for the character that you play as. Ours is, uh, for, you know, they'll still be fighting and action in the show, but there'll also be a lot of character and dialogue and therefore, these trailers are mostly action with some character. It, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Monty. Shane yeah. agrees. And then we had uh, we had posters for the first time for Ruby at the booth. Uh, we also had a set of buttons as well. But that was it. I really wish we'd had a Ruby T-shirt. That would have been a smart thing on our part. But sometimes we don't always think as far ahead as we should. I, yeah, we, we, we sure know what we you're just about. got back from the airport, and I was like, I'm gonna go visit podcast. And uh, you did you show it yet? Yeah, we, we were, while you were talking, it was playing. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so, real quick, before you leave, Monty. What's up? Uh, Twitter user that brick whale wants to know about the importance of the the moon in Ruby because I noticed a certain shot of the characters in front of the moon. Oh, you know, phases and shit. <laughs> <laughs> there <we go. laughs> All right, Monty Probably. made a really good point. I heard I heard you talking to a fan at the booth, and he was asking you a question. I think it was, "What is yellows?" whose name hasn't been revealed yet, what is Yellow's weapon going to be? 
and you said, do you really want to hear it here, or do you want to see it when it comes out? Yeah, so. exactly. I mean, I like the speculation. It's That's kind of part of the fun right now. I think some of the reaction about, which is, it's an odd complaint that you got too much information from the black trailer, you know, it being a trailer, is like there's less mystery. You lose mystique when you add voices. That's that's. But, I mean, how, could we have not added voices eventually? I mean... Better to do it now and do it gradually than to just punch people in the face. Episode one is like, oh, that's right. These people talk, you know? So, I mean, you know, the, the first two trailers, of course, they had that mystique of not having voices. It's like just the same as like, you know, how little Master Chief talks. It's like they, you like them more because you have an idea of who they are in your head. I mean, if you check a lot of the fan following right now for the characters, they all have an idea of who the character is, regardless of how much pantomime I have for the character to co try to convey that. You have to give them a voice. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Money O, everybody. Yep. What are you wearing? Who are you wearing? Who are you, who are you wearing? I, you know, blue, black. He's wearing a Money O. Monty's one of the few dudes who stands good. Oh, uh, you know, it's posture. You... That is, by the way, Brandon, that is the worst <laughs> backdrop ever. It looks like the teeth are like floating in midair. What is hey, fix that tooth at your leg. It's that tooth is like acting up. What? What's the perfect backdrop for a giant? <laughs> <laughs> That works. <laughs> What's the perfect backdrop? I don't well, know, something on the floor? Yes, yeah, so on the floor. Yeah, so you would be floor level, like looking out at the rest of the con, and then the, the couch is right Grading there. Grading of the backdrop? Oh, am I, I floating see. over packs right now? Is that oh, what that is? Oh, you were floating in midair in packs, yeah. I see. You're like, but your like, head is hitting the ceiling. You're like Jesus File descending upon packs. You know, I gotta say, video games. of all the conventions, I think PAX East pre presents the best because. When you enter that exhibition floor, you enter from above and you like go down those escalators. And we had an off. awesome booth that was like shoo, right around the corner of the escalator. What is that? Ours? Our yeah. booth. Yeah, it was good. It was uh, the Elder Scrolls people, but the Bethesda people. They had like their stuff set up there right by the escalators, but they had like offices in there too. Uh -huh. And I don't think they realized people were gonna be able to see directly down into what they were doing in there because they had like little like. Were they like doing naughty shit? No, 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 no. <laughs> you like don't know that. that I would have kicked them out if they were. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go. Yeah, no, I agree with you though. Like you descend like into the pit of I, the madness of like riding the escalator down. It's like oh, and you see everything. Th there was one moment Crazy. I'm going up the escalator and I see two lines for our booth and I'm like, what's going on? And it's not even a line. It's like a cluster. And I, I saw, and I'm looking. I look straight down, and Michael has got his back to the wall with a line of people just wait, with, waiting with their cameras for him to yell at them. That went Pretty on awesome. for some time. Is that is that a big thing you do at cons? You get requests for people yeah. to get yelled at. Yelling and like either yeah. friends that couldn't make it or just like, will you just yell at me? Did a man ask you to yell at his son? No, oh, Jesus. I don't think at this one that, that happened before. Yeah, that was at New York Comic Con. Did you give it? Did you give it your all, or were you kind of like reserved? I, I, or it I, feel I, awkward. I kind of like reserved a little bit. Like, okay, maybe this dad isn't quite sure what's going on, so I'll like hold back a little bit. But like, as I'm doing it, he's just like, "No, more, more! I need more!" Like, he scorsese me, and he's like, "I need raw emotion." And I'm like, <laughs> "All right, fuck it, fucking shit balls, dick!" And he's like, "Perfect." <laughs> He's like, I'm way better than his mother now. I think there was some sort of custody dispute going on, maybe. And like that yeah, definitely went towards the father's side. Hey, I just got a tweet. Yeah, what was it? I just got a tweet from Ashley. I see Bernie forgot to include in his drunk story the part where he pretended an empty chair was Gavin Free and made out with it. I don't have made out. That's not a real story, is it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what were you doing? Bonnie, do you remember this at all? I do not remember this. You have this. to like... There was one point where there was an empty chair next to me. And I said, I wish Gavin was here. And then I pretended you were there in the chair next to me. Yeah. Things got a little hot. Yeah. I mean, you know, you have to fucking <laughs> sign like a out. piece of paper now. You Something have to understand, though, on. the way though that, that breaks down is just, it's just me making out with empty air. Yeah. <laughs> while I'm drunk. How is there no video of this? <laughs> oh, thank God, because I have real friends. I hope that a little Bears bag of popcorn too. becomes the universal symbol of get the hell out. <laughs> Apparently it was kettle corn. Oh, the, kettle the guy even said you gave me. He goes, you were nice about it. You gave me. The <laughs> corn. Who's you're nice about it? Hey, it's just drunk. Got it out of here. Just Here's ease the blow. Game. I really wish that guy. I wish that guy would oh, message that's me. That's like a goodie what? bag. Barbara's chimed in. Oh. Barbara's chimed in. He even made kissy noises. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we're well, learning a lot here. Apparently, at one point, the 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 menu had velvet on it too, and I was like, had it on my face. And I was rubbing it, talking about how soft it was. And then I was holding it in such a way that I rubbed it, and then I stopped, and I think I fell asleep for a few <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I'm like holding my own head up with a pillow. But yeah, that restaurant, we're not welcome back at yeah. Francesca Villa or wherever we ate that night. I felt so bad because Alan like put that all together, and I just like came Alan, barreling in. Alan might be my favorite person from this company to get bevved up with on those because he like he gets you into everything, mm -mm. and then Dude, just 
I, uh, you know I, who's number one. We, we flew back, um, Lindsay and I flew back Sunday night uh, to Austin, and we had to go from Boston to Houston and then had a layover back to Austin. And while we were on the flight back to Houston, it was a four-hour flight, we, we, we had the two seats, and then there was a mother, like, near the window seat, and well, she was actually in the window seat, not near it. And uh, then her two daughters were in front of us, and then there was another man in the window seat in front of us. And, like, I saw him a bunch of times throughout the flight. Like, he got up and went to the bathroom. Was like, I just noticed, like, oh, that guy has earbuds, whatever. Literally, the, plan, the, the, the plane lands, and we're standing up. We stand up. He's got a rooster teeth shirt. We're like, holy shit, that's Alan. He was, like, right in front of us the entire time. Like, literally the one seat in front of us. And uh, we see him on the way out. He's like, oh, and you guys were behind me. And we were like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And we were just, like, talking about the flight because we both had the next connecting flight. And we were just, like, kind of bullshitting in the airport. And he's like, it was really funny because we were watching Game of Thrones, Lindsay and I, which is, like, there's just, like, people banging. And there's, like, titties all over the place. People are getting their heads chopped off or whatever. And we're like, eh, fuck it. It's whatever. a great formula yeah. on that show. Yeah, it's great. So we're watching it, and he's like, that's really funny. He's like, because I, he was watching, I think he was watching Spartacus, which yeah. also just has boobies everywhere. And he said he was watching it. There was those two daughters next to him, so he was covering it. And he's like, oh. he's like, I was really worried about the people behind me because like, I didn't want them like, thinking, like, I'm some <laughs> kind of sicko like, watching this weird shit. So I was just like, I was like, yeah, no, you're fine. Don't worry about it. But we, we got off the plane. And uh, our next flight left at like it, it left at like eleven, but it boarded at like ten thirty, and we got off at ten o'clock. So we were just like walking with Alan, and as Gavin was talking about, he's just like he's like, you know what? Technically, you know, he's like, I'm still on the clock, so you know, if we pass a bar, I can buy you guys drinks, whatever, whatever. And we're like, oh, okay. And he's like, fuck, that one's closed. All right, we'll find it. We'll find another one. We'll find another one. <laughs> we get the next one. He's like, son of a bitch. So like, we finally get to the terminal. It's like like twenty minutes before we board, and he's like. Yeah, I'm getting antsy. I'm going to go see if I can find a bar. Like, he couldn't accept the fact that there was no bar open. Like, he was really annoyed by it. So he leaves and then comes back and has this, like, defeated look on his face. Like, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find one, guys. Like, he just kept apologizing profusely that he didn't buy his beer. But the funny part was while he was gone, they announced over the speaker, like, our, like we, had, we had a hell traveling last year, Lindsay and I, on, for PAX East. Like, every flight we were on got delayed. Uh -huh. It was just brutal. This year was perfect. Every flight was on time. Every flight was great. We get there. We're in Houston. We're waiting to leave at 11. The plane's supposed to be there. They announce, like, the plane's late. It's not going to be here till 11.30, and then you're going to depart at midnight. And we're like, God damn it. We have to wait, like, an extra hour. So we told Alan that, and, like, we thought he got that. And he's like, oh, God damn it, and he left. So then he comes back, and we're just kind of waiting and bullshitting, and we're hanging out in the hallway, and I plug my laptop back in, and we're, like, watching Game of Thrones again, and we're just, like, talking to him, and we, he's like, oh, we should get going. The plane's about to leave. And I was like, didn't you hear? It got delayed. And he looks at us, and he's like, what? And I was like, yeah, it got delayed. It's not getting here until 1130. And he just gets up and walks away, and Lindsay and I are like, he is not taking this well. So we go back to watching Game of Thrones, and we're like, uh, we have the headphones on and everything, and we're, like, down the hallway away from our terminal, terminal. So, or our gate. So he comes back and he's like, you must be smoking crack. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, the plane's boarding right now. Oh. Apparently, like, they were like, oh no, the yeah. plane is on time now. So if he didn't come back, we would have fucking totally missed our plane because we were down the hallway with headphones on just watching Game you of know, Thrones. That's the weirdest he's like, yeah, they're boarding right now. That's the weirdest thing, too. I know somebody, that happened just recently, too. I never in my life heard totally of a plane, on time. a plane being undelayed. Yup. Like, after a plane, it, it was perfectly on time. Once a plane's delayed, though, that's it. Yeah. Like, they, they, got, yeah. A, they got a hold of that because mm -hmm. then you're like, go off and do something else. Yeah. He was like, they, they were like, the plane got delayed. It's landing at 1130. And it's departing at 11.56. And he comes back. He's like, you're fucking with me, right? I'm no. like, what are you talking about? And he's like, no, it's leaving right now. We, we would have been left, and it was the last plane. We would have been stuck in Houston for the night. We went to sleep in the airport, Tom Hanks style. Made no, a movie you, out you, of it. <laughs> Tom Hanks style. Yeah. That's the most obscure Tom Hanks movie ever. Whatever. What is it called? Terminal. Ter is it called Stay Terminal? Yeah, Terminal. God, Boom. Terminal, isn't it? Yeah, well, uh, I don't know if you guys kept up with it on uh, Twitter or anything like that. But Thank you, Alan. I love you. The main group that was, yeah, what's talk to Alan about his expense account? Because there's always some people when they get an expense account here, they Dude, go fucking ape shit. You know the what company this is? Gus. Gus was the worst for the longest time. Bevs are an important part of this company. That's they true. Are. It is true. It is. It is the spirit through which our creativity flows. Hey, I still showed up Monday morning. Where's everybody else that was working? Yeah, I, know. I don't know. Yeah, you were off on vacation. Right. And you're back in time. Right. Is that better or worse? I don't know. Anyway, let's call them out for it. Fuckers. Fuck what are you, they everyone. <laughs> yeah, where did come in today? Like, why did Monty and Shane walk in? Like, why, what's up? Where were you guys earlier today? You can just tell me. Uh, oh, we were, we were at the airport. We 
flying. You flew today. You just landed. Fuck, I got up at, uh, I, my plane was at 5.45 Eastern time, which means I had to be at the airport at 4.45. On what day? Today. Oh, okay. So I had to get up at 4 Eastern, which is 3 o'clock our time here yeah. right now. So I've been up since 3 a.m. this morning flying and traveling. See, our flight there sucked because I didn't want to pay the extra hotel night Thursday night Good for packs. So I just took off Friday for work, and our flight left Friday at 5.30 a.m. So we were going to get up early, but then we just decided to screw it. So Thursday night, we just didn't sleep. You should not. You, you took a vacation day to go to PAX. You should not yeah. have to take a vacation day to Why? PAX. I mean, I don't have the authority to make that decision anymore. But <laughs> Fuck it. You should go talk to the man. Fuck Holly. that. Go talk to him. <laughs> no, because then I got to do him. stuff. See, that's the best thing. Like, when it's a vacation you day. You did stuff. Yeah, but I chose to do stuff. Okay, fair I enough. I chose to sign shit and get trapped in a I don't know why you fight me. I don't know why you fight me on this. Free vacation day. You Bernie, fight me on it. Where was your because car you're not offering you it. You're saying I should get it. Where was your car at PAX East when you were at Well, what? Where was your car? Where'd you put your car? What do you mean? Where was your car? It wasn't at the office. Oh, my truck? Was it? Yeah, your truck. Oh, it was at the airport <laughs> in, uh, in long-term parking. It was at the oh, airport. It wasn't at the office. office. Long-term. Huh? Well, I, I thought it meant I rented a car and then did something with it. I would well, never so, drive a car in ice. Barbara, Monty, Carrie, and Miles all went to PAX, and they all left their cars in the parking lot. Here? here? Yes, here. That makes sense. How'd they get there? How does that make sense? Why wouldn't they? Well, why wouldn't they leave them at home? You they left leave from the office. Yeah, why you people have to pee, yeah, other but people could park there. I, I agree with Brandon. Why drive all your cars here and then leave? And then like meet. fucking just leave from your house. Let's talk about this real quick though. Let's talk about what happened to them because I don't think we've, we've yeah they got that. boned yeah. hardcore. So they one of the bad things about living in Austin. There's not much, but one of the bad things about living in Austin is that you can't get a direct flight anywhere. It's very difficult. You can get like to LAX and to New York because those are big major cities, and it's more so has to do with the, the, you're getting direct flights from them and not from Austin. So most of the time we connect, and we usually connect through Dallas-Fort Worth. So they leave from Austin, they get to Dallas-Fort Worth. Their plane from Dallas to Boston has mechanical issues, which who knows what it was. Uh, and their, their flight was canceled. Thursday night on our panel is the next day, Friday at 1 p.m. So they cancel the flight on Thursday. American Airlines tells them, hey, we're going to get you another flight tomorrow. You'll get into Boston tomorrow night, Friday night. Everybody would have missed the panel. Every single person but me, and I guess you would have missed it. Yeah, I would have ran up there, Ray. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And uh, so Gus was, I'm sure Gus will go in detail about this when he gets back, but Gus had to rearrange the itineraries on the fly for seven people, which sucks. And the best they could do, because they were all booked together, was they got everyone to LaGuardia in New York, then they rented a van and drove from New York City to Boston four and a half hours. And they oh, got that sounds that, fun. They got no, to that night. Oh, that my God, fun. are you kidding no. me? You got to be that kidding me. That sounds fun. No, that's not fun. That sounds so like they, a fucking road trip. nightmare. That sounds like to... a nightmare. That's, like, like, road trips aren't bad enough, and they're awful. It's a fucking impromptu road trip. Like, oh, you thought we were flying? Guess what, bitch? Road trip. That's awful. Because like, it's an obligation. It wasn't a choice. What's that? It was an obligation. It wasn't yeah. a choice. Yeah. All right, uh, guys. Oh, no, we got some of the Yeah. Definitely, I will say, we just saw this thing. I just saw it over PAX. Probably the uh, best use of Vine that I've ever yeah, seen. Over the weekend. It's only like maybe 10 days old, this video. Will Sasso from uh, Mad TV. Get it up. Get it up? I'm not going to get up. You get it up. I don't it's, know what it was Just called. type in Will Sasso fucking lemon compilation. Uh, so there's uh, this Vine app, which I haven't really investigated much in, but it's some sort of like a like short video slideshow app where you can like slap together a bunch of clips. So Will Sasso from Mad TV, I guess, either tweets it or makes these own videos of like his, uh, it's just like this weird shit he does with lemons. I don't know any backstory to it because someone just showed it to me. But someone took a video and made a video of all of his lemon videos that he made. And it's one of the funniest fucking YouTube videos I've seen in a long fucking while. It's just him just fucking with lemons. Can we get that up on the screen? Can we yeah. see this? There we go. It's like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Homemade almond milk. Water, almonds, lemons. Lemons! <laughs> Did he make this or someone else? Someone made a compilation. These are all his videos, but someone combined them. Sasso? Right, cuz oh, <laughs> <laughs> Maniac lives. Make a left on Citrus Avenue, brother. Will can't make it. 
<laughs> Which one? The TV show with Klugman and Randall? No, the movie with Matthew and Lemon. <laughs> 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 what is that's that? It. That's it. What that is, is that? incredible. That's one of my favorite YouTube videos. Oh, somebody video. has found a decent use for that mine. That was so they're like fantastic. six seconds each, I guess. That's just a compilation of I the, the crappy. I had to shout that out. Oh my god. I'm crying watching this. <laughs> Ray watched that like he's seen it before. Oh no, he watched it for the first time today. He watched it like six times in a row today. Cool things that happened at PAX uh, Borderlands. They announced a new Vault Hunter. Uh, I guess it'll be downloadable content. They're gonna uh, release. It's a, actually a bandit. Fun right? fact, uh, just randomly about that at PAX. I don't know if you saw it. There was a part where they had they had one of the guys dressed up as like the Badland like like midget characters. Yeah, yeah Psycho. And then they also had a, a vending machine there. I saw the vending machine. Right. Actually, the company that my brother works for made that vending machine. And, really. Like, he, he texted me like a month ago, and he's like, he's like. Hey, is there some kind of event coming up? Because like someone had us, uh, like uh, Gearbox had us design this uh, like gear this uh, vending machine to like hand out prizes or something. And I was like, and he's like, is there something happening in Boston? I was like, yeah, Pax East is there. So he's like, yeah, no one at this company understands what, because uh, it's just like a production company that he works for, and like nobody there knew what the fuck it was. Like we have to build this thing, and he's like, oh, that's Borderlands, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, but I, just, I don't know. It was cool. cool. If you play the game Borderlands, they had uh, some of the vending machines that are in the game. Like the, uh, I think it was the medic uh, vending machine, and then the the ammo dump one they had there at the convention. That was it was pretty cool. Why did we never get the vending machines from Halo Two? Well, they were digital, <laughs> and they were not in existence. Why didn't we get it made? Uh, yeah, they were kind of crappy, weren't they? Though they were just like they were just like the big overblown rooster and the big overblown teeth in there. Oh, the, right. the, if you ever played Halo Two, uh, there's rooster teeth vending machines uh, that are an Easter egg. On there, it's uh, the map turf. Yeah, with yeah, the with the swing doors. Yeah, good with map, swing doors. Yeah. Video coming soon. Yeah, <laughs> I was on a Halo panel. Uh, they announced um, a, a the castle map pack, which was playable uh, at PAX, and then they also announced at a panel that I was on that uh, they have a new map called Forge Island, which is going to be free downloadable new map. It's like supposed to be their version of uh, um, you know Forge World or Foundry. It's like the Forge map. It's a huge flat space. Where you can build basically whatever you want to. It's, man, those, those Forge map makers in Halo are fucking amazing. Halo and, and obviously with like all the videos we do with it, Trials. It's trials. crazy. No. Watching people make map, maps blow my mind. Like I'm just like... Well, it's, the crazy thing in Trials too is like you end up with something that doesn't even look recognizable. Yeah, it looks nothing like Trials. Half, yeah. half the time it's like an overhead like 2D perspective. And it's like, oh, I recreated this pinball game. It's like, how the fuck did you even do that? Yeah, it doesn't even make any sense. Yeah, I have no idea. Devil work. Devil worship. Evil. We should get... Will Sasso to do one of those, but Monty punches the lemon because it flies <laughs> up his mouth. Back in that was the dude that threw the lemon showed up at the panel. He did, and he gave a like a lemonade packet or something. I, I immediately when he said there was a guy who came to our panel last year at PAX, and he had all of our names written on lemons and threw them up to us on the yeah. panel. And Monty, when his came to him, he punched it in midair and it went back and hit the guy in the face. That was, that was awesome. right before yeah. a guy came up in his underpants. So that was true. Immediately yeah. outdone. We had some fun stuff at the panel this year. Uh, hopefully it'll come out uh, on the, either the PAX DVDs or as part of the streaming. But we had a weird camera angle. for. It was the, like directly uh, over people's heads. Yeah, one of the Q&A positions uh, was normal. It was a view like this of people asking questions and saying, hey, you know, da, 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 da. But the other one was like a straight top-down view, like right down. It was, it I heard no someone sense. said that like on a previous panel, like the one before that, the camera was in the same spot, but the microphone was further back. But I still don't understand how that would have been a better angle. Like essentially, like, the, like someone tied a rope to the ceiling and hung a camera from it. It was yeah, like directly made, the top of people's skulls that made no as sense. they'd walk up and ask questions. So you were just staring at the top of people's skulls or down women's like blouses. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Can I you hold a grudge? Away. Can you hold? What's? Can you hold a grudge? I bet you can. What? Can you About hold what? a grudge? It depends what it is, sure. It's more effort. That's how hold, important it is. It's more effort to hold a grudge than it is to let it I go. I agree, but if it's worth holding on to. Here's what I think. Here's what I think. You really get fucked over. I, I flip, because so when I'm mad about something, I either run out of enthusiasm for how mad I am and I just give up on yeah. it, or after a certain point, I'm like, me holding on to this or me showing that I'm mad at this person is like giving them too much. It's like I'm thinking about them too much or like this situation too much. So I can't, I can't, then I'm like, oh, I don't want to look like I'm like, I can't move on or I'm like a fucking loser and I can't like get over this stuff. 
So then I let go of it. So I, just, I, can't, I can't hold on to grudges. It's different because if, like, if there's like a big blowout and it's like, fuck you, I hate you, and fuck you, I hate you, that's one thing. But if it's like something that someone did that pisses you off, I agree, you can't be like actively like mad about it like forever because then you're just kind of like, all right, get over it. But yeah. I will say, if it's something like significant, it's like I don't forget about it. Like I always like remember it. Oh, back you're saying for don't forget for no, not even forgive, but not forget, but just yeah, like kind of just yeah. like just like I kind of like put it in the back of my head and just like don't forget. Like I don't know. But pick yeah. your grudges. You can't. I mean, pick at some point, I'm like this though. I'm like just to kind of fuck off to the person. You know what I mean? I'm just. I'm it's not. It's different like, if it's personal, or professional. If yeah, it's a professional true. grudge, you can just be like, well, I'm not working with them again. Right. Exactly. And that's yeah. Easy. Yeah, exactly. You just, that's, you just that's, choose to work with other people. Yeah. Personal is harder to hold the grudge. I've never been that mad to the point where I'm never going to talk to someone or ignore them. Well, if someone shows remorse, I don't know how you can stay mad at them. Yeah. But if, like, they don't care and it's like, I don't know. So what do you get person. out of it? Yeah. Bitch. I just, I, I'm not good at it. I mean, I, listen, I admire people who can hold on to it for that long. Hate actually. is hard. It is a fucking effort, isn't it? More effort. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. I think the nicest people in the world are the lazy ones. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? They're just like, ah, oh, whatever. Let's take it easy. Who gives yeah. a shit? Man, I had four beers during this podcast. Yeah, I need to piss. Let's I gotta wrap it piss up. so bad. All right, where are we gonna go eat dinner? I don't care. You, you guys eat dinner first? together? Why not? No we always eat after the podcast, Brandon. Don't you know? You that? Ate I'm, never there. I'm never there. You ate with us the other night. You had some. You had ribs, and then you had ribs as a star as well, which I found weird. Yeah, yeah, I, ribs, I tried ribs. to change my order because <laughs> he didn't tell me that we were getting free <sighs> ribs, and I tried to change it. And yeah. He was like, "No, you don't want to do that. You want to keep these." Fuck you, bitch! You're in the ribs. You can never complain about double ribs. Ribs are always good. Well, I got pissed because like the front of the menu had ribs on a cow, and I was like, I'll have beef ribs. And he's like, we don't have, we have pork. So everyone, make sure you purchase the amazing Tower of Pimps t-shirt, yeah, now dude. available in the Rooster store. Well, available tomorrow, technically. But yeah, it's not available yet. Yeah, yeah it should be. <laughs> and April, somebody just tweeted a photo of the, uh, the angle, the weird camera angle. I actually went down on the floor at one point. Yeah, you did. And was helping. Saved it. Nice job. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Uh, so that's what that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I walked down there and tried to help that person out. That's ridiculous. Cause she was, it was the first female who showed up. Oh, but of course it was like straight down her boobs. So that's her boobs right there on the left. Yeah. yeah. And then her, I met husband, her, and her husband, her husband came that. up. Yeah. yeah. And then the, then the cameraman was funny. He focused right on his crotch. Yeah. I thought that was he funny. Yeah, a dick shot. It was nice. Yeah. We met them. We I met them that. afterwards. I I talked to both of them. They it was were a noble pretty, effort. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, we gave them the first bobblehead, actually. They got, or not the first one, the little kid got the, the first one, but yeah. well, uh, we you know, gave them the bobbleheads. It's almost as good as the first one. Yeah, what the fuck, what do you do? Uh, pe people who are screaming in the uh. Twitter comments, I apologize. We are not going to be doing Gavin or Google this week. We will continue get Gavin or Google next week. I just wanted to beat it to death. That's yeah. Cool, you know. Last week we had I got a pee. theme song and a title screen and all stuff. These guys have to pee. So. So, sometimes you just got to tease it. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you got to tease it. Sometimes <laughs> you got to take a leak. That's right. <laughs> all right. Hey, yeah. is that I it? Just, what do you guys want to cover? Anything else from PAX? I would like to cover about? the toilet bowl with yeah, urine seriously. right now. Like, I'm, I, I, I want to delay as long as possible. Oh, oh God. No, don't burn the door. I'm going to ruin this couch. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right, Gavin is out. <laughs> oh, my God. He took a spill. He took a hard, a hard spill. I think a little bit of pee came out right there. Can we get a mop? Can we get a porter out here? That's what they're called in supermarkets. All right, thanks to our uh, viewers, thanks to our sponsors, Audible. And who was our other sponsor tonight, Brando? Our other sponsor was our Carbonite. Carbonite, there you data go. Data service. So data stuff. Keep your data safe. All right, thanks for watching. We will see you next week when Gustavo Sarola returns. Rooster Podcast. Podcast. To the Rooster Podcast. Thanks for watching, guys. Signing off. Rooster Teeth Podcast. I used to wonder what MP3 could be Rooster Teeth Podcast. Until you all shared the drum tank with me. Bernie Burns and Gus Sarola, Joel Heyman and Jeff Ramsey. Sometimes it's Michael, sometimes it's Marshall, but all in all, you are the best. You're the Rooster Teeth Podcast. I bet this will really piss off Gus.